Today's the day, Championship Monday at legendary Lake Champlain. Season's end looms ahead, and yet again, a rookie has positioned himself for a win. Can he bring it home? Or will someone else pull off the upset today? We'll settle it all today, here, Championship Monday on Bassmaster Live. No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Good morning. We like Mondays when they're championship Mondays, and that's what we have got for you today. Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite. Stop number eight of nine events on the Bassmaster Elite Series for 2024. That was a scene at the Plattsburgh City Dock about an hour ago when 10 anglers who remain from our original field of 102 took off and get ready to get out and get after it for eight more hours of fishing. Of course, day two was postponed and moved to Saturday. Thus, we are a day past our original schedule here, but Championship Monday is something we've come to, to enjoy, to cherish a little bit. Gives everyone at work a chance to uh, get a little diversion on a day like today. We're glad you're with us. We are ready to go today. Big day, we talked about rookies being positioned. Could be the fourth rookie win of the season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. We're gonna keep our eye on that and a lot more to watch. It's again, season's end looms ahead. And we are ready to go. Welcome, welcome to Bassmaster Live. Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukon. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Of course, Mark Zona is with us. And Z, you said something yesterday. You need to watch this tournament. If you want to know, I won't say the future, but the state of the art in fishing, this is going to give you a good glimpse at it right now. I would agree with that, Tommy. We, you know, the ghost fish, suspended bass have always notoriously been uh, just mysterious, like a little bit like our leader in this tournament. <laughs> fish that just are not relating to the bottom, swimming around on bait pods. And throughout this tournament, we've just learned there's not a good amount of fish that are offshore doing that. There are hundreds, if not thousands, especially in the Inland Sea on Lake Champlain. And really the other thing that I don't think this has ever happened in a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament on Lake Champlain. I don't believe one angler we have in our top 10 for Championship Monday has weighed in a single largemouth bass on a swollen Lake Champlain this has been an odd tournament, but like you said, Tommy, it's been a learning experience. And for somebody to take over Koya Fujita, to, to have a three pound lead on this lake, it's monumental. Yeah, it would be, it would be a feat. He's gonna be a hard man to beat today, Ronnie Moore. This one's different from any other Champlain visit we have ever had before. What's standing out to you? Yeah, well, I mean, if we think about the 2021 edition or the 2020 edition of Lake Champlain, most of our top 10, if not all of them, would be within three pounds. This week, just one angler, basically, within three pounds. Uh, Kyoyo Fujita has been dominant. We're gonna see him do that once again today. The big deal is, could those four and a half to five pounders he's been catching turn into fours or four and a quarters if that's the case he has 20 21 pounds the door would be open for someone to maybe catch the biggest bag of the tournament something we saw Fujita do on day two and maybe come from behind and do it we've seen it before yeah smaller margins but we could see some magic today as well yeah absolutely stand by suit uh, you know the the points races loom large this time of year you're going to roll out the big news now or in a little while well, kyle welcher took over the lead he was dark yesterday didn't have a bass track and i said on live because since he had 21 pounds on day two that he, he may be taking the lead going to st lawrence river and he did by only six points though and there's other several other guys only 30 back as cook secure it and walters are about 40 back and the rookie of the year Joey Cifuentes helped himself out, gained about 10, 13 points yesterday, so he now leads by 15 over Fujita, who can only go down. Well, let's take a look at our exceptional playing field. Everyone wants to go to Champlain every year, and now we seem to have unlocked a new dimension of Lake Champlain, Mark Zona. No doubt about it. Taking a look at your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake, 125 miles long. We're going to start down near Ticonderoga and head north actually the way the water flows here from south to north as you see burlington vermont mallets bay on the right hand side of your screen not a lot of attention if you were in mallets bay throughout this tournament you're probably not fishing today but if you were living in the inland sea on the right hand side of your screen that has where been where the beatdown's gone down nine out of your top 
10 anglers fishing in the inland sea as you see our takeoff top side of your screen in Plattsburgh, New York. One angler, Matt Robertson, made it fishing the New York side, and that is your Minn Kota. Unlock the lake here on Championship Monday. Well, the story of this tournament from day number two especially has been this man right here, Kyoya Fujita. Let's take a look at some of his catches that we have seen during the course of this week. With this guy, it's hard to tell one catch from another. He's so efficient. <laughs> I mean, it's the only thing that changes is the size of the bass slightly. Yeah, really watching what he did yesterday. We had high skies, and a perfect south, southwest wind all day long yesterday. And the other side of it, what Koya Fujita has done on the east side of Damius Island, which has been a player pretty much every single time there's been a major event. That is an area that gets a lot of attention, especially this time of year. Really looking from 25 yes. all the way out to 50 feet of water. But a lot of these bass not relating to the bottom, suspended about 15 foot under yeah, the surface. And it was, it was a beat down pretty much all day long yeah. yesterday with Koya Fujita. And Tommy, here's the best way to put it. He just outfished everybody around him this entire event so far. Yeah, it's been a spectacle to watch here. This is fast company here. You talk how a leader our top 10, we had to have 20 pounds a day, average 20 pounds a day in order to make it into this top 10 today. It's not like there's a bunch of guys doing different things here. It's a, it's a kind of a, a single culture at work out there right now, but it has been fascinating to watch. Another rookie right there, Bryant Smith, looking to be the rookie champion for the fourth time this year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. A crazy note, Tommy, you were talking about it takes 20 pounds to make the top 10. We've only had a guy average 20 pounds to be in the lead two times here at Lake Champlain. So this is 10 of the biggest three-day weights we've ever had, and that includes leaders of past years. There he is, Cody Huff, an hour leader, 21-5 on day one, 23-14 on day two, comes back with 22-9 on day three. Kyoya Fujita has a big lead on Champlain as we start into our second hour of fishing. Yeah, and we're seeing three of your leaders fishing in that area today. Patrick Walters, Alex Redwine, and Koya Fujita. And there was at one time, Tommy, there was 20 boats in, well, Koya Fujita back at it early here on Bassmaster Fly. <laughs> Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, yes, yeah, sorry. start as he has been every day so far this week been out there for an hour and eight minutes that's not counting the run time so they haven't they haven't been fishing for an hour maybe fishing for 45 minutes Justin Justin, Atkins. Yeah. Justin Atkins fishing the west side Damius Island kind of right in between Damius and Knight Island another very popular area throughout the years and Definitely something a little bit different. He's been concentrating a lot closer to the grass line, the cabbage line on the west side of Damius Island and said wherever that deeper water, where that 30 to 40 feet of water cuts in hard to that line of grass, that's where the majority of Justin Atkins damage. Actually saw him catch one yesterday with a bunch of grass on him. Scales. I 
man. On the first day of this tournament, a good friend of mine, a guy I've looked up to in the fishing world for a long time, passed away from cancer. And today they're going to lay him to rest. That one's for you, Jay Bird. I miss you, buddy. Well, you can see right there, obviously, using, we talked about it at length, using forward-facing sonar, how far that fish was out in front of his boat. And, Tommy, we talk about how all these anglers have the same exact equipment pretty much, and he's just, just outfished everybody around him. But I can tell you something. I looked at his boat at Lake St. Clair. There's a whole bunch going on on the bow and the stern of that boat with forward-facing sonar. <laughs> Yeah. Not going to say every angler has the same setup as yeah. Koya Fujita. He's, he's just more so as far as the forward, yes. forward facing goes. It's, here's what I can oh, tell sweet. you. If there is a bass within 120 feet mm. radius of that boat, just not in front of him, he will see it. Jacob Fouts, second-year angler. Back-to-back -to -back top 10s for him. Needed him. Yeah, after the Sabine, he was 97th in AOI. Right now, he's standing 72nd. Pretty good climb. The points are so tight he can only Still. gain today, Such. So if he, he moves up four or five spots, finishes fifth or sixth, it's four or five points to get him closer to that top 70 threshold. Standing seventh right now on Bass Trek, he's 71st. So he's got St. Lawrence to get inside pounders, that 70. Where he was the day one leader last year. Really the biggest difference today, we talked about it late yesterday you're going to have more of a north wind pushing against that current first time in this tournament we're going to have a north wind predominantly we have had a south or a west wind in this event he's three pounds Even. yeah he should be way bigger but i mean he's just skinny as a rail he's 20 inches long Davey talked about it at length, Tommy, watching Fujita. One of the things that uh, definitely makes that area on the east side of Damius Island so productive this time of year, there is a crazy, crazy amount of current that go cuts through those islands. In fact, if it's really calm and you catch a bass and get back on your trolling motor, you can really see how that current moves you. I mean, it'll move you a, a, a hundred feet in no time, and that's kind of what makes that area so so productive and it almost has like a deep basin a deep channel in between the islands that reloads this repopulates this area every morning he just keeps repopulating his live well what first two pretty much automatic that was again earlier today on his way to it yeah where we stand right now. None of them nearly up to the weight of what his smallest fish each day has been. We saw this yesterday morning, a bunch of three and a half pounders to close to maybe four pounder at most. But the afternoon yesterday, three of his biggest fish, a 410, a 412, and I think a 45, all came in the boat late in the day. That's the deal. There is the, that is the deal. That is the story of this tournament right there. Pretty much 
watch all of these anglers. I know we showed it yesterday on FS1, all of these anglers pretty much utilizing a jig head minnow. Jay Shakira using a baby Z2 like a lot of other anglers in our top 10. We'll show all those pictures later today. Oh, angler doing something a lot different is Justin Atkins using a quarter ounce underspin with a Berkeley flat worm. Not very big. Number one. Kind of a skinny guy. Oh good, they're still here. So yeah. These ones suck around. That's a big school on the right with Jay Ooh. Shakira. <laughs> Jig head size pretty much has ranged from, I, I believe, uh, Koya Fujita. Told Bassmaster writer David Brown yesterday, I believe he was using an eighth ounce, but it's really been across the board from an eighth all the way up to guys like Cody Huff using a half ounce when it would get windy. Uh, three. got on everyone's radar. Second event of the season, Lake Seminole, knocked out a second place finish there where this, this basic approach was a big part of the setup. Tommy, he's the dream stealer, isn't he? Oh my God. He really is, <laughs> he absolutely is. Yeah, he is, he is the conqueror landed on our shores here. Yeah, wait till he actually learns these lakes. <laughs> mm. Robertson. Oh, there we go. Right here by the boat. One. Hats off to Matt Robertson. He has definitely won the tournament on the New York side. Little 50 guys, feet though. of water. Fishing just north of our takeoff in I ain't Plattsburgh. seen no big ones on the live scope yet. Like, I just threw at him just because. Well, just because, like, I ought to not even put him in the live water, to be honest with you. Might as well throw both them by. Yeah. Pound and a half, pound and three quarter, don't matter. Doesn't matter unless they're three and a half. Might as well say zero. We'll run across them now. Matt Robertson and Carl Jacobson having a good tournament fishing on the New York side, but boy, it was not as productive this tournament as we have seen in years past. That North Flat up by Rouse's Point was pretty much dead the entire event. Koi Fujia hooked up yet again. But all small. <laughs> uh, three. Thank you. 
I'm going to go full disclosure here. A lot of what we just saw there was was kind of highlights from the first hour of fishing, getting everyone caught up to date here. Usually you hear some guys say on in the top 10 final day, ah, five fish. I got to concentrate on getting five. Nobody's going to have trouble getting five fish in the boat today. Nope. That's uh, that is not going to be a concern today. That's already close to the highest winning weight we've ever had here. Six at Lake ounces Champlain. away. Yeah, yeah he's right. almost about to do it. Yeah, it's it's a different a different Lake Champlain this time around. Well worth watching for this championship Monday. So glad you're with us, and we'll get right back to it in just a minute. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Humminbird. Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Hi, I'm Kyoya Fujita. Beautiful. Uh, we are at Lake Champlain. Uh, I use bait. Uh, number one, Jocko Yummy, four inches, uh, original cut, and the uh, Jocko Dirt Fly, uh, five inches. My produce, Big Spoon, uh, Counter Back. Lake Champlain main bait, uh, three, three main bait. A much anticipated bass up top and we're just right oh, there, yeah. everyone wondering what Julia Fujita is uh, using to make the magic happen here on Lake Champlain. Welcome back to Championship Monday here. Our first hour of fishing is out of the way and we will just keep going and we'll keep hanging with our leader because he has once again put a quick limit in the boat. And has uh, got that lead about two pounds now. Exactly, and looking at Koya Fujita actually moving off his primary area. Tommy, I'm gonna rewind time real quick, fishing in an area known as City Reef right there in the Inland Sea. About 18 years ago, there was a Bassmaster open here, and there was two main areas that played, the east side of Damius, where he's been, and City Reef. Koya Fujita has been on both of those areas wow. in this tournament. Fujita kind of doing some practicing, looking for more areas the last two days of this tournament. From about noon on, he's kind of expanded out of his primary starting oh, spot. Morpheus today. He <laughs> just zero chill on these things. Boy, I'm telling you, those are a pair of shorts. Are those better? jams from back in the late 80s? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Remember those times? Well, yeah. 
<laughs> the patterns don't match the camo. Oh yeah. Uh, it's kind of got a Zumba pattern to it, if you remember those, Tommy. Zumba pattern. Can't, can't, can't touch this. <laughs> Parachute pants. They absolutely just go AWOL, don't they? That last call, Koya Fujita has 16 and a quarter on the day, 84 total. Tops the 2007 best winning weight on Champlain of 83.10. And uh, he's five pounds from his normal daily bag. A little fishing time left to go, too. Well, to put it in perspective, comparing three days to three days, Aaron Martin's victory here in 2017, which was a three-day event, 58 pounds and 12 ounces, would have netted him 19th place in this event after That's three five. days. It wouldn't have wow. made. Now we got a lot of coal to do. To the top That's how far he came back. That's where he was. He was 19th coal that final day. Weather canceled day. 51 fished on the final day. Yeah, they just like instantly just come out of the water. He was a surprise winner. I don't know. I mean, surprise himself. He, he didn't even fit. think he had 23.5. Tommy, a bit of, bit of good news. Been watching the forecast for the winds in Clayton, New York, where we're going to be next week on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And winds are are a little bit better than they were predicting yesterday afternoon not, not not fantastic but a lot better than they were saying they were going to be thursday night into friday not 40 miles an hour not 45. <laughs> <laughs> still a bit of wind three pounds and this is kind of what we've seen every single day with Koya Fujita, where he kind of runs away with it for a few hours, and then you slowly start to see the anglers in the top 10 chip away at it. But. Fujita, yeah, he is he is flawless, absolute machine, no waste of time. Koya Fujita catching a limit early already today, and the scary thing is a lot of room to grow. Really looking at what he's been doing, like so many of your leaders, little jig head minnow, like we got to see in the Bassmaster Classic with Jeff Gustafson earlier this year. Little jig head minnow has become a big, big player when a lot of these bass are not relating to the bottom. Utilizing the area on the east side of Damius Island, then heading to the west side of the Inland Sea. BMC on point early this morning already. I'm gonna give it to Koya Fujita, who I think has won every single sponsor element ever. <laughs> In a Bassmaster live event. That may be a first. That's, that, that is a sweep. That's a sweep. The only thing left for him to win is the actual peak performance of the event, which is the winning week video feature that we do after oh, right. the tournament. Yeah. I would love yeah. to, we'll get to see his whole week broken down. One of our fantastic editors here in Little Rock. Let's get out to Jay Shakurit. Jay Shakurit. One more day to fish here, and obviously looking looking forward very much to Clayton, New York, St. Lawrence River, Lake Ontario, where he set the record for smallmouth on the Elite Series last year. Notice one thing with Jay Shakurit and a lot of your leaders in this tournament, Koya Fujita also, that are throwing that jig head minnow, baby Z2 for Jay Shakurit with a smeltinator jig head is very, very subtle action. Not a lot of rod tip movement, kind of, you want to get that bait past a lot of those fish. We've watched that on a lot of the screens this week. Get that bait past those fish where it almost just swims and pendulums into these schools or solo rogue fish. That's the one thing we've seen. Not a lot of 
Not a lot of action on the bait. It looks pretty fat. Just can't never judge them, you know. Could be four, could be four, could be four and a half, could be three and three quarters. Could be three and a half. Yeah, I feel that championship Monday energy in Jay Shakur's boat this morning. <laughs> Wait a minute. Just getting started. Three and three quarters, probably. Well, there you go. It could be four. It's fat. We'll just see. Yeah. Again, Jay Shakur, three part and of three our quarters. Progressive Bassmaster Anger of the Year race, fourth place right now. And then that other one's like a th three, probably. Yeah, it is a five. And, and I'll say, Tommy, the top six in AOI, it's definitely a two-horse race with Cobb and Welcher being six points sure. apart, but with the top six being within 42 points, that's very doable that, that our leaders are 50th or 55th in the tournament and someone gets a top 10 like Joey Sefuentes. It is very doable, and especially for him having to overcome a couple guys that are 10 points ahead of him. That's just that's three quarters of a pound at the St. Lawrence's 10 spots. Potential to go to the last day. It could, it could indeed. Yeah. Especially with two days of practice, possible rough race. weather. It's still gonna be a race. One other common connection with all of your leaders pretty much in the Inland Sea. And Ronnie had a great, great shot of the Lake Master mapping is how close all of these anglers are to that main basin, that really deep main basin in the Inland Sea where it gets out past 100 feet of water, which really, you would think kind of helps these areas reload every day with that deep water access, very close to guys like Alex Redwine and Koya Fujita and, and Jay Shakurit, who's fishing a little bit more on the Ooh. north end of the Inland Sea. All train tackle, scope jig coming out soon, Berkeley Gulp Minnow right in the roof. Like three and a half, probably. Alex Redwine, 22-14 on day number one. That sort of set the stage for him. He's been able to hang in there, mostly in the top five all week long. And look at that. Oh. Well, look There's at that shot. Oh, those are big ones too. Come on with it. Please get that thing. Dude, he smoked it. Gosh, dog it. Those look like the right ones. Got it. That is so cool. Number one, baby. <laughs> oh man, I love that. Them suckers are setting high. They keep doing that today. We're gonna have some fun. What were they, like three feet down? Yeah, man, they were just mauling them right underneath the surface. I'll have some more of that, please. Bring on all you want. BMC Sleekhead with a big Z2, I mean, I big five that. inch Z2 in all this tournament. Long. That's not something you get sick of. Cody Hupp, one of two anglers to go over 23 pounds. Did that on day one here. This one. Maybe Fujita, the other angler to do that, did that on day number two. We're talking about Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. That most important race is 
certainly coming down to the wire with the end of the season dead ahead of us here and Kyle Welcher who came in here with a one point deficit to Brandon Cobb lost it lost that uh, lost ground in big way on day on number day one. one yeah he's fought his way back to the top well we look at Welcher and Cobb they've been the story we're talking about Shakir and Walters but let's not underestimate how good Drew Cook was this week finishing 12th he did his job and he's 30 points from AOI going to the last event terrific job by Drew Cook we'll see him next week and we'll be back here in a minute yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. What a great, unique tournament for Lake Champlain this time around, being fished like we have never seen it. Being fished before we started the season out that way, down at Okeechobee, one in a way that no one would have predicted. It's been a season that's not just more the same. It's been a unique season. Current conditions, 71 degrees. Room temperature basically cloudy with a north wind, nine miles an hour. That's an opposite direction. What it's blown, as Mark Jonah mentioned, for the first four, three days of this tournament. Exactly. And Tommy, take a look right there at Damius Island on your left and Night Island on your right. Before we went to commercial break, I watched there, there was an aerial, a drone shot of an angler running through there. I got news. You do that when the water's about three foot less, you're going to fool around and find out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get out to Austin Felix. We have not had a lot of no. chances to spend time with Austin Felix. Certainly one of the favorites yeah, coming in here. Definitely on the short list. He's performed every time we come to Lake Champlain, even fishing out of a borrowed boat this week because of his uh, traffic incident at Lake St. Clair. Austin Felix. Hey, slow down. Yep. Trying to catch up by making more casts. Yeah, it was, you know, we'll, we'll let him slow Make down a deficit. little bit. Go back and get that for you in just a minute. Take a while, let's take it back out to Patrick Walters. Another great season for him. In progress right now. Good, good effort here at Champlain. Ronnie, I have to think Austin Felix will be on the short list for a year. I know you're big into that fantasy fishing, no, the of fantasy fishing. I would think Austin Felix a big pick next week. Yeah, this whole northern swing was right up his alley, but struggled just a little bit at St. Clair. Fishing didn't expect it to get one the way it did, and or didn't expect most of the top ten to be fishing the way they were. Hey, just uh, and an FYI. TGIF, that, that area of Anchor Bay <laughs> has been throttled the last couple weeks. Not not quite producing the way it was when the Elite Series was there. First day under 20 pounds, but just barely. 19.8 yesterday, but 21 plus the previous two. After yesterday's weigh-in, three he days at Champlain, my second he was actually most sitting on a boulder. 20 pound bags. Oh, the first one I've got this like season chilling. behind St. Clair. It, it surpassed with 50. Yeah, with yeah. Or for, I'm talking about for the whole oh, tournament. For, oh, for the whole oh tournament. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. gotcha. 53 20 pound bags. It passed Lake Murray. Which was 51. Smacking some three pounders. We knew it was a matter of time before Patrick Walters figured out smallmouth. He's way too good at way too many things that to not be able to correlate that with smallmouth. And been practicing on him a lot, been fishing other top level tournaments to get good warm ups on smallmouth and red fishing. Really figured it out. <laughs> Now 
let's let's see if we can get the Austin Felix. Yeah, we can get that hookup going now. I'm not, not sure, might have been Cody Huff that said this, how this tournament set up a lot more like our Lake Oahe event where a lot of fish just not relating to the bottom quite as much. Yeah, I was surprised to hear that yesterday. I kind of, yeah. I, I didn't think of that. Don't do that. It's really interesting, Tommy, the area you see Austin Felix, we talked about City Reef and the Inland Sea, and that area on the east side of Damius Island. What's, what's really strange about that is how quickly they get out there. You know, like like literally 30 days ago, you don't you like don't catch a bass out in those areas. But it, it, when they show up, they show up in massive, massive numbers in August. Yeah, I had him hooked in the nostril. <laughs> Good start to the morning. Felix on the board there, and and, and you, you talk about how quickly they get out there, Z, and that's that they're there to further notice, right? I mean, that's absolutely that's it for the year. You'll you'll see a push when you know when we really start getting chilly nights in September, they'll start grouping up shallow again, yeah, and, and, and what's looking at it. Look at that shot right there. Come on, that stick is a your party. Neck out and get a hold of that thing. Go on now, boy. Got it. That was a great shot, Jake Latander says. He has brought it for us this week because Cody Huff's screen has told the story of this tournament. The thing that makes me happier than anything, though, is just the mood of them. I mean, them jokers are eating stuff. talking about Austin Felix and how he was a shortlist favorite this week. Five of his last six events that he has like fished, semi-pro or pro level at Lake Champlain, he's gotten a top uh, 18 finish. He's got a top 10 this week, fifth in the Elite in uh, 2021, 18th in 2020, and he has two top 10s elsewhere. So he might be from Minnesota, but he is very good at big Lake Champlain. Big natural lakes. He's obviously got a, got a feel for it. Jacob Fouts fishing in the mouth of Lappins Bay, a notorious largemouth area in the Inland Sea that we've seen in years past. And really cool, Jacob Fouts has kind of had this area all to himself. There's only been on our tracking system only one other angler in that general zone and that was Brandon Cobb on day two and yesterday I ain't seen it yet I don't know how big it is it's not very big I was swinging but he's got it Choked. It's gone. 
That was almost bad. That should be wet. That's a little bit bigger than I thought. Look at how he, look at how he ate that. I mean, just gone down the hatch. I mean, down the hatch. Uh, he was barely hooked too. It's a nice one. It's a fat one. And Tommy, for if you really, I thought about this after we did Bassmaster Live yesterday. You really think about it. All of these suspended fish that have been caught in this tournament, you know, from. 25 all the way out to 60 foot of water, even deeper. The decades that those fish have not big. been bothered he's, he's at all. Thick. Thick. At all. Centuries. Yes. Yes. This lake's been here in this form for 15,000 years since the ice was <laughs> <Right. laughs> Those fish have probably not. The only time they've seen a lure out there is when somebody's been trolling. Yeah. Justin Atkins doing his best to keep pace out here today. Caught probably more fish than anyone yesterday, numbers wise. Well, that one was aggressive. I'll be honest with you, when that seagull squawked, I didn't know what that was. I thought it was your line. I thought it was my reel. Yeah. It's like... It feels close, whatever it was. Help him. That gives you an idea of the kind of day he's had. So, man, he has caught more than anyone else so far this yeah. morning, Justin Atkins. Yeah. Really kind of doing something different than the rest of the anglers. Fishing in the inland sea, fishing very close to that hard line of grass on Damius Island. Again, a quarter ounce underspin, predominantly through the whole tournament with a Berkeley flatworm. Very, very subtle. Did not want a lot of action on the back of that underspin. And the one thing that he did do throughout this tournament when we had really dark clouds on Saturday, went to a black flatworm. And then as the skies would brighten, he would switch up colors and get a little bit more natural. But the big key was wherever that deeper water, 30 to 40 foot of water would cut into the grass. Big key for Justin Atkins this week. Justin, uh, eating into that to lead by Kyoya Fujita a little bit. Only two pounds now as it stands right now. Justin Atkins, who's having had not a great season by his standards leading into here, but here he has fished his way very near the top 50. And big expectations for him. He's finished second on the St. Lawrence before. That's coming up next. We'll be right back to Lake Champlain Championship Monday. People have been throwing drop shots at them, and I, you know, for all I know, that's what the leader's gonna win on. I don't have a clue, but what I have come to find is, especially with Chad eaters, they want to feed up, and so this week I've been throwing an underspin at them, throwing it out there over the fish. I'm not fishing it, but five to eight foot deep, and letting them come all the way up and get it. When I can get a group of them to commit and come up, it's almost a bite every time, and it seems like throwing that underspin, that flash, it's a, you know, the bigger one is committing to it. Atkins, uh, second place currently, and also our Phoenix Boats big bass leader with a 4-3 in the boat early today. Exactly, and second tournament in a row, we have seen an underspin, a big, big player for smallmouth. Might get to see a little bit more of that next week, possibly out on Lake Ontario. Gonna leave that area with Justin Atkins, get to the north side of the Inland Sea. See ya. 
bunch of anglers there today. Cody Huff, Jay Shakurit. I'm going to get out with Austin Felix live. Solid one right there for Austin Felix back down to Damius Island with Patrick Walters. Pretty much the common depth range with a lot of your leaders in the inland sea, 30 to 50 feet of water. Tell me I was thinking about this. I was going to bring it up to Davey. One of the areas on the New York side, which has always been a player from really Kings Bay up to Rouse's Point, that, that you know, 13 to 17 foot flat. I don't think we've ever had a tournament where there's not been one of the leaders on the final day on championship, usually championship Sunday, that there's not one angler that made the cut. I don't think an angler made a cut to the top 50 really? fishing that flat. No, that's the only really the only area that played was south of there about two and a half, three miles on the south end of Isle of Mott uh, was Carl Jacobson and Matt Robertson, mm -hmm. but they were fishing out in, you know, 40 to 60 feet of water. It's so weird that that flat did not play for anybody that cashed a check. He's that big, he's just mad. He was actually sitting on a boulder. The first one I've caught, like, chilling. Fish looks identical to the last one he caught off that yeah. bolt. <laughs> Patrick Walters in your Angler of the Year race, going to be fifth place no matter what, at worst, out of after this event going into the final event. As we bring it into the Dakota Lithium screen of knowledge, wanted to touch on a couple key stats that have came out after Lake Champlain, kind of solidifying some classic races and also kudos to two anglers. And those two are Stetson Blaylock and Kyle Welcher, the only anglers in our Elite Series field to go eight for eight so far on making top 50 cuts, fishing semifinals Saturday almost are on every single event this year. Kyle Welch, you can see all of the top 25s that he's had this year are in yellow. He's only had two finishes outside the top 25, a 41st and a 44th. I believe those were at Lake St. Clair and Santee Cooper. Meanwhile, Stetson Blaylock, for the longest time, really didn't have many top 25s. He would make the top 50 cut, but wouldn't get in the top 20. Maybe he wouldn't, wouldn't have a shot at the top 10, but just ever so consistent in those middle of the ground finishes in the cut. He's, he's picked it up lately on our smallmouth swing, 18th at St. Clair, 22nd at Lake Champlain this week. Then I was crunching some more numbers, thinking about that classic number. You try to take what the line is right now after three days of competition at Champlain. It shouldn't move much more than it is. Brandon Lester, the final man in the classic right now, 464 points. If you take that and divide it by eight, and then you times that number by nine, that should be the estimate of what the classic cut line should be. And that's around 522 points, give or take a few points. 522 is the mark. And so right now, Pat Schlapper, 
is the last man who is absolutely should be safe whether he catches a bass or not at the St. Lawrence River. 525 points is what he has to be in the top 20 in points. He should be safe without catching a bass, but obviously Chris Johnson's 21st in points, about 10 behind Schlapper. Other guys maybe just have to get minimum Hey, I weigh in, get a top 80 finish, and I should be clean and clear, safe. There should be about 10 to 15 people above and below the classic cut line that will maybe have a chance to jump into it or fall out of it at the St. Lawrence River. So some numbers there at the classic cut line, and kudos to Kyle Welcher and Stetson Blaylock making every single day three cut this year. Only one angler did it last year, and it was Brandon Lester, but to see Blaylock do that and be ninth in points. That's yeah, he how just jumped good. in the top 10. Yeah. Some of these guys who have missed cuts, like Cobb, yeah, uh, the 90s at Sabine, have had so many top 10s that it has outweighed their bad finish, and Blaylock's ninth in the points yeah, race. You think there's more high finishes in our top 10 than yeah, there in the average year for crazy. sure. Yeah, if, if Welcher goes on to win Angler of the Year, a day you can look back on where he saved some points was Saturday in this event. He fished on the New York side predominantly the entire day one and then went to the Inland Sea on day two on Saturday where he made up crazy ground. That decision to fish in the Inland Sea, if he wins that title, that will be a pivotal, pivotal day. 35 points that day. He was 60th after day one. Wow. Yes. Finished 25th here. Three and a half. Take him. We'll take him. Why is that side on? That row is right. And they like it. Oh, get it. You know, Tommy talking about how most like of these guys that. are trying to trying to mimic Come on up something there, that oh. is close to the forage in here that these fish are on, you know, small two inch we ale wipe. You've seen guys like Cody Huff using a bigger Z2 throughout this yeah, tournament. Really I think one thing that we're gonna really we see, I think uh, Ronnie and I were talking about it. We believe we've seen a depth Sakamata Shad on a jig head in this tournament and possibly the last tournament. Um, you're going to really see, I think, you're going to see soft plastics become, when these fish get weary from getting their head kicked in this style of fishing throughout the next few years, oh, man, I think, I think you will see more I think that's just part of lifelike soft plastics than we've ever seen in decades prior bass fishing. It is amazing how it went from being the flashiest, brightest, fanciest looking colors to the matte, the dull, that they look like a worm on the sidewalk when it rains, you know, it's the not going to be appealing on the shelves, but man, the, the fish have taken a liking to them. I don't think it's that big. No, nah, it's not that big. We put him in the well, though. 
Tommy, that is the smallest bass we've seen on camera. I know. All <laughs> I was just thinking line. that. Everything what happened? Has been, everything has been over three pounds for the mo most part on Bassmaster Live for four days. He got through the screening somehow. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. So just just to what you were talking about, Z, what those bait those bait piles of bait we're seeing are alewife almost exclusively. For the most part, I mean, you know, when you get closer to those grass lines, you you start to start to get in, a, in this lake, especially up near Rouse's Point, man, is is these for the most part the way we used to fish. You look for pods of perch, like mm -hmm. you run out there in thirty four point six to sixty feet of water that these fish are on. And I think a lot of fish that we caught in years past, you know, bombing a, a heavy Yarr. drop shot or catching them on 2D would basically just follow your drop shot down to the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it was it, big it, and I was lying, but I still like her. Oh there gosh, is. this place is fun. No doubt, though, Tommy, we've talked about this. You can have the best smallmouth spot mm. on planet Earth. If there is not food around, they're not there. And what we've seen on St. Clair in, in Anchor Bay a couple weeks ago, Woo. loads of food, crayfish that. and perch, emerald chinos. And in this one, it has four? been, for the most part, all alewife eaters. Perfect. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Him for a second. Gotta be bigger than two pounds. He's probably bigger than two pounds. So. Very cool. Brandon Polinick just sent a pic. I'm gonna send to Ronnie right now for the screen of knowledge of what these fish were eating throughout this tournament. A really, really good shot of what these anglers are trying to mimic in the inland sea. Thank you, Brandon Polinick. Yes. You're good. Can you move that bag? I'm gonna try to get in that seat. The other thing about it, looking at this good one right here for Jacob Fouts, Tommy, is we talked about a little bit yesterday on FS1, you're not having to fizz nice a lot one. of these fish. They're not completely bottom related. They're be. air bladder. Close a bit. It's a actually one, very man. acclimated to going up and down very quickly, chasing That's those nice alewife one. in the water column. Dang big and...
to where pretty much everything next week probably needing to deflate that air bladder, more bottom related, goby eating small mouth on the St. Lawrence River. <laughs> what? I don't know. Well, it will be interesting to note the, note the changes. It's, it's not going to be exactly looking like this, is it? No, no. And that, that first day ought to be a Ought to be a little bit of a rodeo coming out of the wind, coming out of the south. Ooh. At about 15 to 25 later in the day, we have Four seen that quarter. before there. Mm -hmm. We'll take him. Number five. Ooh. Yep. Well, Jacob Fouts, we've talked about one thing, that that north wind pushing against the current that goes from south to north on Lake Champlain might hurt that four pound average bite. Seen a lot of fish catches today, but none like this big solid one for Jacob Fouts fishing out from Lappins Bay area we've seen in years past. Jacob Fouts coming out of nowhere, stealing the power pole replay championship Monday, my friend. Here's your new Phoenix Post, big bass leader is Jacob Fouts. Valuable points. Can't yes. lose a single oh, point this week or th right. today. Can only move up, and he moves up three to five spots. That looms large going into next week. He has helped his cause in a big, big way. So we're just getting out of the first quarter of this day, this, this four-quarter game we call Championship Monday, and we'll have more for you as we head into quarter two. Yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Cramp your arms up. Oh yeah. We'll have some of that. So I've just been live scoping them out in the middle of the in the middle of some of these big bays and, and live scoping them down the edge of some bars and honestly just kind of out in the middle of some places. And the fish are just roaming, chasing bait like crazy. Oh, and uh, the cool thing about it is, is, you know, you never know how big the next school's going to be. You know, any school you could, you could roll up there and, and they'd be all five pounders. Look at the graph, dude. Look at the, look at, look at the graph right now. Right here. They're going nuts. You know, it's one of those deals that's kind of, it's anybody's ball game. If you run into one of those schools, you can make up some ground fast. Cody Huff, a man who has achieved about the, well, the two highest things you can do in the world of college bass fishing, the national championship and qualifying for the class. I'd say the three, the three best things, those two things and being friends with Rick Klon and having well, him the best, I mean, that's, that's, that's not many have had that. There you go. That's true. Talk about rookies now. Rookie leader, the rookie leaders up there. Very close race between Joey C. Fuentes with two victories so far this season. Incredible, incredible job he has done. And of course, Joya Fujita right behind him there. Every shows every possibility of a, a final day well, showdown for that one next week. People keep saying, I don't know how Fujita is so close to Sefuentes when Sefuentes has two wins. This right. is Fujita's fourth top seven. Those are basically wow. the same points yeah. as victories. He has four top Real sevens close. this year. Championship Monday rolls on here. Eating up the hours. Let's get back out to Patrick Walters, who we just left moments ago. You got a, a text really... regarding him, didn't you, Ronnie? I'm sorry. About sorry, Walters? Pa Patrick Walters? Yeah, Tom Mann said, I think Patrick lost a bet to wear those shorts. I said, it makes it feel real <laughs> yeah, tropical yeah. out there. If, if, if it was sun was shining today, they'd oh be messing gosh. with our cameras, I promise. It's yeah, supposed to clear out here. Those was... things would pop. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a pastel sherbet color. Yeah, psychedelic shorts, that's where it's at. Oh, orange and lime, Z. Oh, yeah, kind of a dream sickle. We'll find us little big ones. We're going to smack them. This is really the first time in this tournament that Koya Fujita has kind of gotten away from that primary zone around Damien Asylum where you see Patrick Walters right now.
this wall is. Talk about how good the rookie class is this year. And, and really looking back, Ronnie wasn't Patrick Walters rookie year a really solid wasn't that the same year Drew Cook yes it was the, the it yeah. was the first it was, was a bloated rookie field we had Livesey you had Cook you had Walters wow. all in the top 15 in the points race the Johnstons came on that year yep, yeah. yep. not considered rookies but they were yeah. newcomers right. yeah but that was yeah. that was a, a whole crop that got revealed Walters how was good yeah real good how good Walters they were. was leading both AOY and ROI for a while until, like, yep. at the northern stretch <laughs> well, can't really throw it back. That's number five. All right, so number five goes first. Yeah. I will say I've gotten confirmed reports from Patrick Walter's wife, Emily, that said those were his vacation shorts for Turks and Caicos <laughs> a few weeks ago, but I guess they're turned into fishing shorts. They look so great yeah. with the moss green jersey. I'm just saying that I don't pick out his stuff or his facial hair choices, so. Those old Turks and Caicos championship <laughs> yeah, exactly. Monday shorts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's Proud awesome. tradition. That is very impressive though. We're talking about AOI. Walter's 16th his rookie year after leading for half the season for AOI in rookie of the year. 16th his first year. Then he goes third in 2020, fourth in 2021, fifth last year, and not guaranteed a top five, but currently yeah. in the top five going into the last event of the season. Tommy, you'll find this interesting. One of our buddies that always gives us great information. I used to fish against up here, Tom Victor. Big time Ticonderoga fisherman. Interesting, told me that there was a 20 boat tournament went out of Missacoy Bay yesterday. And obviously we didn't have a lot of pressure up in Missacoy this time around to 23 pounds of largemouth with a seven pound big bass largemouth yesterday. Wow. <laughs> we missed that now. I mean, I got home yesterday, and the first thing my wife says to me is, did they catch any largemouth out there? I mean, people, not people one. pay attention. We had none on and I said, no, not yesterday. I thought you were going to say Casey was asking about Missacoy. Or did they, no, no, did anyone she go was up to Rouse's? Or, or, <laughs> no, she wanted to go to talk tie. about that railroad bridge or anything. <laughs> I didn't know what to yeah. expect. Yeah. Casey, oh, Casey Sanders. Yeah. Casey Sanders has not been concerned with Ticonderoga throughout. This <laughs> no, no, that's fine. No, all year. Mallets Bay now. She was she was keen on Mallets Bay. That's all. Yeah, he's a giant. I saw several largemouth come across the stage. Just Canterbury had largemouth. I just wonder where he went. is a big one. Oh. Hey, I know this sounds crazy, yeah, yeah, but, but this one. is the first time Fujita sort of left the door open a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, I'm sorry, trivia. Oh, yeah, it's trivia time, Bassmaster Trivia. Here's a question. What largemouth, smallmouth mix? What was the largemouth, smallmouth mix for Aaron Martins, his victory in 2017? Was it 10 small? This is a three day tournament. 10 small and five large, six small, nine large, eight small. No, no. 
I can't see what. Seven small, seven eight small, large, large, five and small. five tenths. Okay. So convoluted. Yeah, I'm, gonna it is. I'm gonna go with. <laughs> you wrote it, give Such. Me, <laughs> give me A. You get Because I remember him catching a lot of smallmouth uh, every morning of that. I'm gonna go with A. Ten smallmouth. I'll go with A to five. to just be. I'll D. I'll go D. Quick with it. I mean, of course, it's C. Seven and eight. Of course, it's C. Even close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, six two large mouth on the final day. Twenty three five come from that. Is, that is some man. esoteric man. knowledge here, Such. Really is. <laughs> well, we talk about the mix now. I mean, yeah. And Brower one with all large mouth, which that's right. Was flip flopped here. So I thought it was, I thought it was a little pertinent. It is a little pertinent. It's a little impertinent Fairly of you to suggest that I wouldn't think so. <laughs> Brower texted us yesterday, talked about it a little bit on FS1. He said, I can promise you I'd be in Missacoy Bay. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't see Brower as a as a Demiki rigger. Doesn't I just no. That's don't no. It's kind of hard to. It would take some CG. <laughs> Uh, some computer generated away. action to see that. I'm gonna finish fish out of there and then I'm gonna roll. There's so many fish in here though, golly. There's ought to be one right here. Looks like Robertson was going in there a second ago. It's like a school of like 45 right here. He wasn't a cold. It's getting a little, yeah. it's getting to the point where it might be the roughest we've seen in some parts of this place. Mon or day one was rough in places as well, especially Gordon. in the afternoon coming back from guys. The chart I just looked at, this is this is, this is the tops right here, right now, it's like 10. It's not gonna get any more not, than this. Not supposed supposed to go up right. significantly the system's more. gonna leave, it's supposed to get uh, a little bit sun popping out here we'll in the afternoon. Horizon there. And Tommy, I talked Five. about that area, that trench that cuts in between the islands on the east side of Damius and, and the days that, that I've been, I'm fished out in that area a, a whole bunch. The days that you see them sort of disappear as far as them, the big ones, all way, I, we talked about it at length yesterday, is has been on a north wind oh, when it slows are. that current on down and really, really scatters them out where they're not positioned as good. I meant it actually really positions them good for quite a yeah, it's, 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 But it, de definitely, definitely seen a change in size today for Fujita so far. Yes. That last fish for Atkins gave him a half a pound upgrade, so he's just one and a half behind Fujita right now. Both of them well below 20 pounds, though. Jacob Fouts with the biggest limit so far today, 19. The only one with two bass over four pounds. He's got the 412 Phoenix Boats big bass. Ooh. Brian Smith, the only one without a fish. And there he is. First look at Brian really Smith like today, the rookie there. from California. That my bait just landed on. That they're attacking. That's a giant. Oh no, it's not. Dang it. But, hey, start somewhere. Stay away, Seagull. I need these. <laughs> oh, 
the birds, huh? Man, that was a good pull when you first came out. Come on. I'll do it again. You're not that big, but I'll start. I'll start somewhere. You're good. Where are you going? Some boat right there. Man, I thought that was a big one. Usually when you pull into them, they give you the, the pull back. It's usually a better one, but... Right. It's better than what my morning's been going. I used to actually accurately cast on one and catch them. Maybe they're up shallow. You saw these, but I was gonna stop out there. Saw the birds. If you're live, tell me about uh, the conditions today and how it's been. Yeah, we got completely 180 flip from the past three days. Got the north wind today, cloud cover, basically everything I really didn't want. But hey, right there in the background, you see all those little white birds? I was going to stop out there. I was like, man, I got it. I got to go take a look. I look, drop the trolling motor in there. Immediately, there's six or seven fish right on the, right on the grass. So maybe they just moved a little shallower on me. I don't know. I've been trying to target that 25 to 35, but maybe with this cloud cover, it might have moved these, moved the bait up shallower. I don't know. But that was, that was cool. That was cool. Follow the birds. It actually worked this time. Most of the time it doesn't work for me, but that's pretty cool when it does. Now I need to find the rest of them. Where did the rest of those fish go? Mike Smith, 22 pounds, first two days. Dropped off a little bit yesterday yeah, to just under, under 20. Yeah, they're on it. Oof. You take a picture of that right there. That is the story of this Bassmaster Elite Series tournament. Jeez, this one sucker is pulling. Stay on there, big girl. Come on with it. Not a big one, but it's a nice one. Not as nice as I thought it was when I hooked it. I mean, Tommy, just a hypothetical question. What, what would what would one of these guys do in the top 10 if their sonar went out? What do you do? Just go throw <laughs> under a boat dock? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great question. What would what happen? Do you do? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, if you if you're That's awesome. if you lose you lose power, electricity. Uh, what happens? That's a well, we contemplate that for a little bit. Walking around in the dark. <laughs> yes, that's right. Bumping around. Justin Atkins hanging in there. A couple of pounds behind. No, a pound and a half behind. We have Fujita right now. Jacob Fouts, big fish in the boat as well. So things are happening out here a little closer than we might have expected. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Ranger Boats. 
ヤマハトヨタエンバイダコダリフィアム Not a bad little start. Yeah, you know, I just, something about smallmouth just really, just really hits close to home with me. So I didn't really spend any time in practice. I spent zero time in practice fishing for largemouth. I mean, it was just something that wasn't in my game plan.、Um, I feel like, especially in the summertime, smallmouth would just feed so much, just like we're seeing everyone out deeper、uh, fishing for them fish that are feeding on bait. Freaking five pounder, dude. Leg champlain. Those smallmouth will just build up and become really heavy, almost sometimes heavier than largemouth. There's just an abundance of smallmouth where I feel like it's easier to compete for multiple days with smallmouth. Alex Redwine, part of the、uh, youth quake, the youth movement that's certainly been going on this week at Lake Champlain. Pete Robbins and his observations of day three on Bassmaster.com talks about that. It's worth checking out. Yeah, Steve Wright did a whole. A story on the younger generation taking over is just for a forward facing sonar event like this、yeah. or being up in、think. rough water. And obviously, it didn't happen in, in this tournament, but we're going to have an event on a lake like this that you have, you know, a, a massive population of largemouth. Somebody's gonna, I don't know what year it'll happen, Tommy, but somebody is gonna find the mother load of largemouth when everybody's out doing this. Slower morning, and they are、so、going far, to have them kind of all to themselves <laughs> for four days. That's,、um, but we still got a ways to drift down. Hopefully, we can run into a few more. As of now, though, it's a lot safer to be a largemouth on Lake Champlain. <laughs> You're absolutely. I, hey, g- give it up for guys like, you know, Jason Christie kept it honest, had a really big stringer in practice, and saw Bill Lowen had a, had a really good catch of largemouth and Menendez. Menendez but yeah, Canterbury's yesterday. Could, yeah. yeah. Could not compete with this gig this time around just、mm. for the sheer numbers. Yeah. Of heavy three pound bass.、Uh, probably like two. Is there a, a time frame this summer, Z? Late May, June, July, August, September, where largemouth would excel more than they are currently right now? Or is this just the trick? You know what I'm、yeah. saying? Like, is there where they're better? Abs- absolutely, man. You know, you put this tournament, this tournament's the end of June. You're going to have smallmouth spawning, you're going to have a crazy amount of largemouth shallow. Um, the, 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 the difference in this, Ronnie, compared to a tournament in late June and, and July is the smallmouth are scattered out then compared to, dude, these, the, 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 there's hundreds in a 10 acre stretch in this tournament.、Um, so, yeah, you know, when, when the smallmouth are scattered out, I, I think your largemouth play more of a factor, but when the smallmouth are not, Scattered, it's hard to compete against what we're watching right here. Doing it for Cheetah, looking for a small upgrade here, I would imagine. If he gets one. Not big again, but honestly, don't even know if this is a bass. It's fighting really weird. I don't know what I got in here. About right. Hey, he's got heart. Gotta count for something. He's got heart. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> the second smallest fish I put in the live well this week.
Smith on a later schedule today. Yes, again, this third fish in the live well. Matt Robertson has got four, none of them very big. Stay down. Maybe there's a on this edge over here today. about that one. <laughs> That's a touchdown in the end zone, almost going out of bounds, baby. I loved his expression well, looking that... back up into the camera. <laughs> oh, he, he did not mean to do that. No. Desperation flip there. That was, a, that was a volleyball move. Uh, limit for Robertson, now we just have Redwine, Smith, and Felix without limits. We talked about this yesterday in our broadcast on FS1. You're going to see this guy go on a run. I'm sure that'll get the chat boards fired up. But the, Matt Robertson, as I'll just say interesting as he is on and off the water, Tommy, he is the real deal. We have had him on Bassmaster Live a lot this year. He shows up. I don't know what I got here. Right. Hey, he's got heart. It's got to count for something. He's got heart. Yikes. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Second Brian Smith, only three way. days of experience fishing Lake Champlain, what he's done in this tournament. It just feels like a different day in the inland sea today. Definitely a lot of fish catches, but we are seeing a lot smaller fish today than we've seen in the three previous competition days. That is about as shallow as we've seen anybody fish in the last couple days. bunch of dinks. <laughs> you said they, they're smaller. They are smaller yeah. this morning. That is true, which is changed. unacceptable, Tommy. Yeah, that's that's, that's right. We're, we're average. spoiled. We are spoiled. We want to see the Giants fast and furious sooner rather than later, if possible. Thanks, guys. Kyoyo Fujita, 84 pounds on top, just a pound and a half ahead of Justin Atkins, keeping things, keeping things a little tighter than we may have expected so far today. Jacob Fouts, Cody Huff, Jerry Secure at Austin Felix. 
now our 10th place man right now with Matt Robertson ahead of him. Plenty more to come this morning from Champlain. Yeah! A goal! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. That's, that's just the dream come true. That's all that is. Uh, to be an Elite Series angler, it's something I've wanted to be ever since I think I was probably seven, eight, nine years old. I grew up watching Bassmaster, and now to compete at the highest level in the sport under Bassmaster is uh, it's really a dream come true. Brian Smith of California, who qualified uh, by the Southern Opens last year, did great in South Carolina. He's got a great track record in South Carolina. Oddly enough, happy, I'm sure, to be in here. He's got a small limit in the boat now. Best job being done so far today. It's Jacob Fouts with 19 pounds plus, well, 19 pounds even, unofficially, in the boat so far. He has, uh, he came ready to go. He's moved up into third place. Oh yeah, taking a look at the Mercury move of the day. We said we could possibly be slower with that north wind getting to those 20 pound stringers that were so easy to do, it appeared on days one through three. A little bit tougher this time around on Championship Monday. Jacob Fouts getting it done all by himself out in the mouth of Lappins Bay, unofficially with 19 pounds. Mercury move of the day, jumping all the way up to third place for young Jacob Fouts. Mercury move of the day. Got one on now. You you sort of predicted it. You did predict it, Mark. Don't take him take him some time to get get this dialed in. Will they get it dialed in to the degree they have the first three days? I you know, I don't know that we're gonna see a. I don't know if he's going to help or not. 21 to 23 pound bags. It is not quite the best smallmouth conditions. I mean, we had two really prime days, days one and three with high skies and a nice breeze. Not the case today. North wind, low, low ceiling. And Ronnie, I know you tipped on it a little bit. I know we're watching the Angler of the Year races and Rookie of the Year races, guys trying to qualify for the Classic, but next week, very important for Elite Series anglers requalifying for the Bassmaster Elite Series next year for 2024. Yeah, staying requalified to go over it again, not on a vague level, but just in a general level of top 70. So if you're 70th oh. in points or up, you are guaranteed to come back next year. Below 70th, you have to rely on your average based on your career. If you're a first year rookie, you get to come back, you know, for next year guaranteed, stuff like that. Who who needs, really needs to catch them next week? Uh, I mean, we're, we're watching Jacob Fouts. He's moved all the way up to right around 70, 71, yeah. 72, 71. depending on where he finishes in the top 10 today. He can move up or down to any of those. He'll pass Bernie Schultz, who has taken a medical hardship. He's at 71. Bernie has fallen from 50th since he has missed this event with a torn bicep. Uh, not at risk of being cut, but Chris Zaldane's below the 70 mark. Um, so obviously, if he was below there, he would be one of the first people that would be no doubt back, like immediately first person invited back average wise. Um, I would say Matty Wong, Ed Locker in 79th, 80th. Those guys are about 50 points from 70th. So, um, wow. and, I, and I think the average for the most part for 70th place this year has been like a 55th to 60th place average finish in a tournament. So if you think, you know, I need to gain 40 points on that, if we expect the average to continue, you need to get a top 15 or top 10. Um, obviously winning the event gets you in the classic, but some guys will need to get close to winning the event to get enough points to stay requalified. But all in all, sure. all in all, whether someone's in 85th, 88th, if they move up and get just close to 70th and maybe, maybe that helps their average enough, you know, that 15 to 18 spots helps your average enough to where you're one of the 10 to 15 that make it back via your average. Because we're going to have some bigger names that will need to, to lean on their career average, like Buddy Gross, Chris Aldane, Chad Pipkins, guys like that who have been veterans will need to lean on their average. Other guys, uh, Michael Frazier will lean on his average. Other guys will uh, 
will have to just outright do it because they've only been on the elites two years or three years. Wow, those are some big names. Yeah. Mullins has moved his way into the top 70 after a great week last week and the, our last event and this week. Keith Combs is 67th in points. He'll need to stay above that. He should have a great average overall, but uh, you don't ever want to test it. They take all their years into account. They don't throw out a bad year if they. I think if they've fished over five, five years, years, you get like a drop year. I do believe. I do believe that's still. That would help your average a bunch, maybe if you had a really poor if, season. Yeah, I mean, if that's the outlier year. I'm confused. <laughs> it is it's kind of like. I have a complicated confused. formula. I think I got a pretty good one. Come on, baby. Start the party for us. Party started. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about right there, baby. I want to help. I want to help. Bingo. Oh, he's got three fish under three pounds. Yeah, that helps. The clouds are supposed to be thinning around now. It's uh, a pretty good call there. Take you a bath in there, buddy. like a 390 something. Yeah. Yellow is good. Green is about 15 pounds, 19 pounds plus. Jacob Fouts at 19 even is looking for with this one. Yeah, I chased those ones forever. They were hurting a ball of bait. Tommy, we're gonna go full, two full days on Bassmaster Live on Lake Champlain without a single largemouth bass on camera. It's, uh, it's very fair fair to say that. That's a head scratcher. It's crazy. And a potential for four more days next week on the St. Lawrence. Well, I guess so. I, I do think when that wind switch, sw switches to the north next week for the St. Lawrence River Tournament, I think we are going to see some Really long runs next week. How how, is, how far is a long run and on, into Ontario? Oh, I, I I think you'll I think you'll see guys going in, into the lake. I think you'll see them go forty to fifty miles this time. Wow! Especially with that north wind, mm -hmm. not very conducive on a south wind. But I think we're going to have three days out of the north from Friday on next week. Get a 
good look at oh, how God. upright those fish are, even though these oh, guys no. fishing Perfect. so deep throughout this tournament. Perfect, coming up. To the New York side with Matt Robertson. It might be, the, might be their little, I don't know. Oh no, maybe not. I don't know. Can't tell. They don't look too little, but it's hard to tell. He ain't getting those big head shakes. <laughs> He's fighting like a good one, I don't know. Yeah, he's a good one. I'm telling you, we're going this way, baby. Right handed. It's like trying to throw a ball left handed. Just ain't happening. Nice one. Nice one. Berkeley power twitch, baby. He swatted at it. Well, not the Berkeley power twitch. I think it's a switch, but whatever. I call it a twitch. We'll take it. We're not even looking at these ding-dongs. See, what I probably just made a wrong call, and I don't care. <laughs> a lot going on in that boat, Tommy. I caught 20 pounds already if you didn't roll up on me. Well, ideally, we hope Matt Robertson made the right call, but coming into the event in ninth place, he can't really drop too far. As we bring it into the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, wanted to talk a little bit about the favorites. We mentioned them on day one, who were the fantasy fishing favorites for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and for Mercury Drain the Lake. And it's a couple guys that we'd expect. Brian Schmidt, fantastic track record here, finished 17th place. You've got a set fighter, never been outside the top five here, finished in the 60s this week. Very disheartening, frustrating event for him. Tried to smallmouth fish, tried to largemouth fish, tried to do both. It ended up not working out. It seemed like if you had to be fully committed to smallmouth to be able to be ultra successful this week. Austin Felix made our top 10. He is fishing on Championship Monday today. Taku Ito, 30th place in this event. And then Josh Douglas, there are some things that are just out of your control at times. You can have a decent bag of fish. You can have a competitive bag of fish, but you have to make it back every single day. On day one of this event, he had a uh, problem with his hot foot. You know, a, a spring broke in the six foot waves coming from 20 miles away. Ended up having to try to fix that and make it through the waves. Ended up showing up 15 minutes late on day one and 15 minutes late at the weigh in means a zero for the day. That hurt him big time in the standings being uh, behind the eight ball after day one. So he had a better day yesterday, tried to salvage the tournament, but once you have that tough of a day one, it's hard to come back at Lake Champlain. Uh, then we look at some drain the lake kudos. I wanted to give some kudos to the guy right there at our at our desk, Mike Sukon. He has done fantastic Ooh. all year long. This was his Not team. It wasn't, it wasn't the best team this week, Such, but you're still in the running in the top 20 of Drain the Lake. You pick Combs, Hartman, uh, Shryock, Livesey, Robertson, Schmidt, Hamner, and Kenta Kamura. Matthew Robertson's the only angler for you fishing championship uh, Monday, but either way, a great year. I'll have to go 13th, over to the buddy. standings real quick I'm 13th. Here to you show you. That's what, If you'd let me get to it, Such, I'll give you the kudos. 13th Ooh. place for Such in the world. 13th place for Such in the world. Has a shot going into the final event. If he maybe gets the winner of that tournament, that he could be uh, our Drain the Lake I'm champion for the year. Yeah. So, Such, I'm trying to give Thanks, you kudos Ronnie. here if you let me, but it, top, top 13 in the world, kudos to Such. I'm going to interrupt is, you. That is, that is impressive. That's Such, don't, don't ever sass Ronnie Moore. I mean, I'm, try oh, it's the, I'm yes, trying sir. to give him some love <laughs> yes, here. Sir. I can't even get word in edgewise, you know. 
to help. And Tommy Suja, also a very, very powerful fantasy football player, which yes. truly shows he's good at make-believe games. No, that's it. <laughs> he said, I like playing make-believe. He has an eye for the talent. Now, Ronnie says, I got lucky picking Sefuentes at Seminole. But I had seen his results before, and he was a filler. I thought, the, you know, the other guys who lived down there, First possible time. winners, I filled them out like that, who could win at each event, and then filled in the back end. Good prick turned out. And I'll say even more kudos. We picked our teams every event this season back in January before a cast was ever made, before we ever knew the conditions, before we knew that the lake would be swollen with large mount, you know, and thinking who's about good, large mouth or small mouth. Yeah. So fantastic team selecting. I think I got like 56 last year in the world, and Such is the one holding mm. it strong. I scrolled down real quick because it said 2400th in the world for me. I'm not. I'm not talking about it. Well, okay. Understood. Understood. No need to dwell on things you can't change at this point. Oh yeah. Tommy, I mean, do you, you ever slide into Such's DMs <laughs> asking for fantasy advice ever? Uh, no. No. Know. No. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> But uh, that's. I don't know what a DM pretty, is. Pretty so, cool. Fujita still with the lead right now. Two pounds back to two pounds lead. Plenty more fishing to come. We're going to take a quick break and be back. Yeah. Hustler! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Hope your Monday's going well. Glad you got some time to spend with us here and there as you check in on the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. Getting close to the end of the season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is event number eight and one left after this one. Once again, we have a rookie on top. As we head toward the end of the tournament, will, be the, will it be the fourth rookie win of the year? Unprecedented wow. here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. What is the most that we've ever had in one year, rookies winning? I don't think. Brandon Cobb, too. Oh, he wasn't a rookie. He was oh, a first year. Right. He was a first year. I say yeah, this year already. Right. Three. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, would, I would definitely say three is the most at, at most. Wow. Two first time winners as well. Three. Oh, three we got Ravet, Sefuentes, Palmer, Will Davis. Yeah. Well, that's, I count him as a rookie. Yeah, we have so, four. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 you're saying besides rookies. Yeah, yeah, Brock, yeah. Brock Mosley's first time winner. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone's been a first time winner except for uh, Sefuentes' second win and Drew Benton's victory. Drew Benton. Yeah, Gustafson, classic, he won. Benton. Matt Robertson just put a good one in the boat a few minutes ago. Not real nice, but 30 pounds. There's bigger ones in that school than that, I don't know that. Screwdriver, get the hook out. These are little fellas. Don't care. Don't take my pole bobber. You're right. You can stay a little while, Andy. Dad gum it. Make me eat my words.
Z while Fujita gets a weight on this in the waves. One of our photographers and media folks for the website, Chase Sansom, he's out on the water right now at Champlain and says, I'm not sure if Davey's mentioned this when he's jumped on live periodically, but Kiyoya hasn't had to run big water and navigate it like he has this week ever in his life fishing in Japan. Yeah. He told Davey wow. that these are the biggest waves he's been in and Chase added, it'll kind of be curious to see how long he pushes it today, if he's able to catch him out in it and then also make it back in time. It's pretty bad out there. The worst it's been all week for, and Chase is one of the, wow. Chase was on Atkins earlier this morning and has been bouncing around. Wonder what he's gonna think of next week. Yeah. <laughs> he has the most fish catches put in on Bass Trek, of course, nothing over three and three quarters. And, and, and re, uh, it's all sort of relative. I mean, it's it might take all day to to get to 20 pounds, but you you could you know. And a lot of these anglers talked about it that these fish were getting a little bit more weary yesterday, a little smarter, harder to catch. But there there's still so many heavy three to four pounders. I I, I believe this is way more of a weather situation that you're seeing just because across the board the anglers that are near that main basin in the inland sea um you could tell it is a different bite today compared to what we've seen the last couple days Like Tommy, we we just didn't see fish like that. No, that, you know, no, really small bat. We didn't see any of that. Mm -mm. The last Normally, I throw this back, but it's too tough. So we're just gonna put them in there. That's five, but he's got a one pound, 12 ounce, and a 113 in his five. Red wine has a 1-0 in his four. He's the only one without a limit. Only a few have missed limits here. From day one, we had 95 of our 102. The average was about three pounds, seven ounces. That's a better one. Woo. Nice save. Wow. Recovery. <laughs> Uses blocker there, Z. Like a hockey goalie. It just goes to show you, Champlain is one of the, if not best tournament lake in the country at times, putting out numbers of big bags and consistent weights throughout the field, but you'll have those guys that don't make it back to weigh and don't catch a limit, yes, don't make it back. So to see the St. Clairs and the St. Lawrences do 100% limit rate is something that, that is so rare. Yeah, 98 guys got limits on day two, 49, only one missed yesterday, but the average went up to 311. Three pounds, 11 ounces yesterday. yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's gone up two yeah, ounces. And it, it not being a great lake, this this place, you, you see a lot of damage to bass boats on the Great Lakes. You have seen a lot of damage mm. to bass boats on this body of water when it starts to growl. I think we had a south, maybe southeast wind in on the final day with, with thunderstorms on the final day of the open in 2018 here. And I was in the boat, we entered the gut at the south, you know, the south entrance of the Inland Sea. And it was, like we said, a 45 minute drive just to get a couple miles. And my boat driver looked over and said, I'm sorry. And I said, dude, just get us there safe. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is crazy out here. I feel big. I'm bigger than Oh, baby, one thing I got. 
blue sky up there. I think we finally spooked the school off. Where are they at? Here, we have definitely seen more fish catches with a jig head minnow in this tournament than any other tournament we've covered on the Elite Series. We, granted, we've seen Damiki style baits fish vertically on Scott Cherokee, but never to the extent we've seen in this tournament, oh. guys casting it kind of the way you saw Gussie doing that in the classic, mm -hmm. but that has by far been the uh, most productive technique in this tournament. There's about 15 right below this fish. I just ran into a wolf pack of them. I'll probably get on that back deck. Is that four or five? I don't know. Is that five? How many of them? Is this number five? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Huh? Is that right? This, have I gotten four or five? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Got to make sure. Is that number five? Yeah. Okay, I was gonna say. It's kind of been so slow I forget. But I just didn't want to make that mistake. This is the limit for Alex red wine, only 12 pounds change. Upgrade. Started his climb back up. He was falling all the way down. Started the day fourth place, now he's in seventh. Be huge for him, uh, not losing that. points, being up in fourth place, not losing five points or so today, just for that requalification line. Like yeah, he was right saying, there. you want to have it all in your back pocket as we go to the last event. Yeah, last year, Ronnie Redwine was 71st. This year, he just got inside. He's 68th with the fourth place points. So that's what it comes down to. If you're a guy like Chris Zaldain, Buddy Gross, who have been in the top 20 in points for most, if not every year of your career, when you fall below, you'll, you'll be fine. But it's the guys who have been 55th to 80th. If you have a year or two like that, and you're below 70th in risk, you're not helping your average out with, with your current sitting. Yeah. And so, but I do like that move and that change back to the old way the Elite Series used to be where the top 70 is the mark. It allows people who have had maybe a 95th place rookie year that they don't have to go finish in the classic cut to make their average high enough to stay qualified. They can go and earn it each year in the top 70. I'm not going to help Patrick Walters right there. So let's take a look at our unofficial standings. Two pound lead still for Kyoya Fujita. Down from three where he started the day. So things are a little bit slower to uh, open up than what we were expecting today. Cody Huff moving up there. 81 pounds and 15 ounces. Fouts, Shakurik, Walters, and Redwine. Alex Redwine just now getting a limit in the boat. 
Plenty more to go before we reach halftime. We'll be right back. Yes! Yeah. No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Championship Monday from Lake Champlain. So much Bassmaster history here traditionally. The presence of bait fish in key largemouth areas of the Inland Sea has been a big, big part of a winning component here. That's half true this time. The presence of bait fish big time in the Inland Sea. But boy, if you're not a member of the Smallmouth Club, you are not here today. No. No. You're exactly right, Tommy Sanders. This has been a definitely a smallmouth dominated event, almost like you can see on a Lake St. Clair. And this was just moments ago, Koya Fujita getting back to his primary area on the east side of Damius Island in the Inland Sea. Boy, not big calls, Tommy, but those yeah. are on a tougher day all around for our field. Those are one inch closer yeah. for Koya Fujita. You got to think there may be someone out here who catches a big bag today, but like you said, the odds of a 22 to 23 with the weather and the, the conditions. It's harder, so the closer he gets to 20, the, the more that door closes. Now he's at 17 and a quarter with that fish, about a half pound upgrade, 85 even on Bass Track. Jeez. What do you have his closest pursuer now? Come on. I mean, doesn't help when you hook him two feet from the boat. Yes, sir. That's what I'm Caught him with about three feet of line out. I mean, one of them smoked it. There's three of them. Missed it, and I was like, gosh dang it, they're not going to get it now. I literally, I saw my bait come up whenever I jerked. Three seventy for a two seventy. Three seventy? Yep. of what we have seen in this tournament. A little bit higher skies. Definitely sets the bait up a little closer to the surface. Ronnie and Owen, when we come back from our midday break, I'd love to show some of those photos we got from Polinick. Got a great pick from Scott Canterbury of the Ale Wife these fish were feeding on. Yes, sir. He was. He was showing off for the camera. Two feet of line out. I don't know. Three and a half pounder put Cody Huff back in second place where he started. He's got the second biggest bag at 17-12. Fouts, who started 10th, has the biggest bag at 19-12. 
Tommy, you think we go over 100 pounds next week? Uh. Mm. Gosh. E. I'm gonna say it'd be tough. I'd say it'd be tough, you given so? the conditions we've been talking about. I, I, I do think Friday, Saturday, Sunday, with that north wind, we will see some big stringers. Um, I think, well, I think it'll, it'll, it'll scare it, I think. Shy. Okay. Well, you heard Jacob Prozik on stage yesterday. I thought he was talking to somebody, and he said take over 100 pounds. He even said 106, 107. Hmm. I'm like, wait a second. Yeah, hold on. Flip flops caught the lip. <laughs> 25 pounds a day. Getting I mean, that's excited over smallmouth. That's like, like two 28 pound bags and two 25 pound yeah. bags to get to 106 or something like that. And that's Let's just do 100. <laughs> we've we've had a nice streak going here since 2019. About busted I've a fire. I've had a 100 pound event flops. every year. Oh yeah. What was our that's, biggest smallmouth there last year? Bag. C88 from, oh, from Corey fish. Johnson the last day, wasn't it? The bag, bag or the fish? The fish. Individual? Yes. Well, we knew Mueller had a 713 I mean, I years. I think it was like a 610 last year with Welcher. 612 I think Welcher. Welcher. Yeah. Well, 612. And then Blaylock also had one. LaHue had one right there in that range. But we remember when we were We've been in the 90s when we've been there in August. What's that? We broke 100 with four perfect oh, days so in I July. And then when we had the open in September in 2021, it was well, 78 I... pounds for three days. So it was on the well, same pace that Fighter track. was yeah. at St. Clair. It's kind of the starting breaking hole it these too. islands. I can't really. It's... Hey, the Chris Johnson year was like two and a half pounds shy of 100. Mm -hmm. 98.7. And that was with some incredible final day weather conditions they had to deal with. Our cameramen were chumming for them. Came, we just ran into another wolf pack. We've run into three wolf packs so far. We're just drifting with the wind. This one's got about 15 or 20 smallmouth with it. But it's just a matter of running into some four pounders in them wolf packs. I feel like we haven't caught in a true giant yet. I think this one's all right. But it's just, a, it's crazy just what a difference of like, like we started here for two and a half hours and barely caught anything. Now we're seeing some more activity. So hopefully that's a good sign, but I'll try to get this one in the boat for now. It's just like a three something, but we're showing some life. Let's not bust the tire on my flip flops again. There's Giant. We haven't caught in some of them true like four or somethings yet. But I guess we'll get there. Probably just like a three and a half. Maybe, I don't know. amazing when sun starts to shine a little bit how it instantly turns a bite on for small mouth. Don't do that. 
trolling motor can't keep up. You're fine. You're fine where you're at. Where you are. Oh no, we pulled off. Oh, oh. God dang it. Tommy, you're right. We have not seen no. many lost fish all tournament That's long. That's the first one like that bad that we've seen. Yes. Which is unusual. Good. Over on. That's, That's a heartbreak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just looking over live. Okay. And a four bomb. Vegeta now again with a two and a half pound, two pound five ounce lead. It's kind of left the door open a little bit. Yeah. Only 17 you and a quarter, but it. you have to say it's. Well, if we have is. to, if we remember the last time we were here, 2021, Brian Schmidt had 62 four after three days. He was leading by almost three pounds. It was like two and a half right. pounds. The same situation had only 16 pounds or change on the final day. I think 17 maybe. Obviously the weights right. are a little bit lowered. And then uh, that allowed Keith Combs to come from third and almost win that event from him. Schmidt sealing the deal at the end. So Kiyoya, whether this is his worst day by far or not weight wise, he has done his work with that advantage of two and sure. two and three quarters. Yeah. Well, we've just been become spoiled with 20 pound stringers. I mean, it, it, he still has a really good bag, especially what he did the first hour. I mean, he's unofficially over 17 pounds with still room to grow today. Absolutely. Getting closer to closer to the halfway point, just about at the halfway point of this fishing day today. Still plenty more coverage coming up here on Bassmaster.com, including the live mix. And Dave and Davey, Dave Mercer, Davey Height. On location coverage is coming up a little bit later. And don't forget, right here is where you're going to see the weigh-in beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks so much for being with us on Championship Monday from Lake Champlain. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapalon. Early short.
Golly. So many right here. Missed him. How am I missing him? Good bit of fish right here. There's like three or four groups swimming around. This fish didn't look big. Good bait here. Plenty of fish. Just gotta find a place to catch a big one.
No. What the hell?
gosh. Come on, fish. Man, that thing looks big. Spooked him. <coughs> Come on. Golly! Oh, I'm gonna puke. Come on, fish. Bit me twice. I'm about to pin his butt with a little bitty two-incher. Got him, dude. Got him. Big and two. Come on, girl. over the shoulder with the hook shot <laughs> with the hook shot dude I chased him and chased him and chased him how many times did he come back he bit me twice finally changed baits on him to a stinking crappie jig bonk that looked like a long one yes I mean, it, it is what, we, what you thought it was yes it is finger back. I've got 383 right there at a 392. Gosh dang it. Just like that, we got 19. Working our way up. Here. 
See you, dude. Later. See ya. That is crazy. I mean, bit me twice and chased him down and caught him. That is what I'm talking about. Oh, look at this, Jake. Come on with it. Oh, he had it. What a wad of them. I know those are not all white bass, there ain't no way. They're too big.
It will help. It's good to actually catch one. Miles and miles and miles. Finally got one to fire up. Not how you want Championship Monday to go. Three pounder. Huh. Pretty bad when you're disappointed with a three pounder. pounds along this, but I'm not even seeing a lot of them. You got one shot on the way down. If you're fishing in this wind, you got one shot to land on them. You cannot catch up to them when they're like this.
There's a lot of them right there. He's gonna freaking help anything. Big one, dude. No way! Woo! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Welcome in 
to our on location coverage, a very rare championship Monday for the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain because earlier this week we had to postpone a day. And we're going to finish this up here on Championship Monday. So if you're at work, if you're back at school, everybody's got a note to enjoy this because you got to check out what's happening on Lake Champlain. And I'm joined by Davey Height. This is one of the most versatile fisheries that we ever visit. You know, you can win at largemouth, smallmouth, but it doesn't look like that this week, Davey Height. <laughs> it, it really doesn't. And, and a little bit of the reason is at the time of year we're here a little later than we've been here most recent years. But, you know, we all have been talking about it all week. The forward-facing sonar has changed this fishery. The, the cha it's changed the way you fish this fishery. It, in years past, you could come to Lake Champlain, and so many anglers like to do that because, hey, you can come here and do what you want to do. You can, and, and you can even be like Seth Fighter, and you can flip mill foil, or you can chase a smallmouth and fishing on rock piles or, or bars or shoals and, and even a little suspended fish throwing top water and that sort of thing. But it has been 100% suspended fish over 25 to about 90 feet of water. I saw Matt Robertson in about 90 feet of water this morning, just unbelievable. Um, but those fish suspended, and, and these anglers are looking at them with the forward-facing sonar, and Koya Fujita is, <laughs> he's shown the whole world. A lot of us knew it, how good he was with that technology, and he's certainly showing everyone here this week. So is this what it is from here on out? You know, you're saying that, and I'm like thinking of the epic runs to Ticonderoga, Denny Brower running the other direction. Like, is this a time of year situation, or is this – what the sport is today. It's what the sport is today. Uh, and the time of year, a little bit. You know, uh, you know, if they were spawning, those, those fish would be shallower and they'd be relating to the bottom. There's no doubt about that. But um, it's what the sport is right now. And, and, you know, we've got one more event next week. And I think, I think everyone needs to kind of look at, is this what we want the sport to be in the future? Um, who knows? We, we don't a allow a lot of things. Um, I'm not saying we should not allow this, but I think, Discussion is always healthy in off season. I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussions. There has been discussions all around the world, really. But we are in Plattsburgh, New York, and a guy that's no stranger to the championship round, Koya Fujita, unbelievably not just leading this event, but just say that to yourself. This is eighth Bassmaster event, his fourth top ten. Davey, hey, that's. If he could put the wheels on the bus on those other four, I mean, he's your angler of the year walking away. Yeah, it's, it's unheard of. Uh, you know, you've kept up with the sport just like I have for a very, very long time. For someone to come out here on the Bassmaster Elite Series, a top level of, of professional bass fishing, and make four top tens as a rookie out of eight events, that's absolutely incredible. Well, there's been lots going on on the water, and let's catch everybody up with what's been happening on the water. And you know what it is. It's our Toyota Midday Report. And we'll start with Justin Atkins, an Alabama angler, but, man, he has cracked the code to smallmouth bass. He really has, and we've seen Justin's career. You know, he's had a great career, a young career. Uh, had a slower start this year than, than for him, you know, to – to whom much is given, much is expected. Well, nothing's given in this sport. He's just accomplished a lot and had a slower start uh, the first part of the season. But hopefully coming here, we thought, well, he's going to recover and move up and have a chance to maybe make the Bassmaster Classic this year. And he has certainly put together what he needed to do here this week. Currently unofficially in second place. So, And this thing's not over. You know, the lead is actually tightened up a little bit. Not quite two-pound difference in first and second place. So, Jeff, Justin Atkins, good to see him having a good tournament here for his points and for just, you know, mentally feeling good about him, himself. And then going into to next week at Thousand Islands where we've seen him do very well there before, and I'm sure he will again next week. We always talk about a big bass, big stage, big dreams. And nothing will show you that those dreams do come true more than our top ten. I think the oldest angler in our top ten is Austin Felix, and he's not 40 years old yet. But Cody Huff in his second season, and, man, this is a guy that's going to be a player for a long, long time. Yeah, Cody Huff, we've seen him do well in these tournaments, using forward-facing sonar, but he, that's not just his only deal. He's not a one-trick pony for sure. A, a good fisherman, well-rounded uh, fisherman, and, you know, a, a joy to be around and talk to about fishing and, you know, I've talked to him this this year some days, maybe not as good as he wanted, but always got a smile on his face. Very knowledgeable to be as young as he is. A good 
a good, cool, level-headed kind of temperament for a young angler. You're going to see a lot more of Cody Huff, not only this week, not only today, but uh, for, for many, many years to come, in my opinion. Cody Huff, obviously a former Strike King College Bass champion. Fished a classic through that, a two-time classic qualifier, but it's cool to see all the Rookie of the Years and all the former collegiate competitors in this top 10, but somebody who has no problem catching bass in America, the prince of Japanese bass angling. Certainly does not have a problem. And, and like we were talking earlier, it's not just here this week. This is his rookie season. Oh, he's going to have a great chance to win his first one today. But looking at his entire season, uh, he's you know had one or two tournaments where he just missed the missed the boat, so to speak. But absolutely incredible to to think that this is his fourth top ten in eight events, and, and obviously a great chance to win here today. Using forward facing sonar probably more than any other single angler on the Bassmaster Elite Series. They all use it a little bit, but he, he tries to find a way to use it every single event, whether we're at Okeechobee, Seminole, Lake Murray. I watched him at Lake Murray quite a bit. He was the only angler, because you know we had school and fish, the blueback Aaron was shallow. He was the only angler fishing out offshore looking for suspended fish. Well, let's get out on the water live now, and we'll join another angler who had great success in the collegiate program and backed it up, winning a Forestwood Cup and a Bassmaster Open, but really needs to hit some steady ground on the Elite Series. I mean, and that is not a slight. Like you said, with his resume, much is expected of him, and he expects that of himself. But it, it is kind of puzzling, his Elite Series career. You keep waiting for it to take off, and maybe this is the start. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we talk about momentum in our sport, and this is certainly... Uh, Kind of what Justin Atkins needs to get some good positive momentum on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Like I said, we've seen him do good at Thousand Islands, you know, make top tens there and a few other places. But if he could string two good events here, uh, here at Champlain and then next week where everyone expects to see him do well again there next week, he has in the past, and, and leave the season with that momentum, two great finishes, then might have to look out for him next year. It's a big one, dude. I was jealous of his kids this morning. They came to take off in their pajamas. It was really amazing that takeoff, just looking at, and it didn't really even hit me. It kind of hit me during the top 10 intros yesterday. But just how young this top 10 is. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's amazing. It, it totally surprised me. You mentioned that yesterday afternoon, and uh, it, it totally surprised me. I was talking to Stevie Wright, uh, and he was kind of thinking about how the age of our sport seems to have changed. And, and uh, I agree with him 100% that it has definitely dropped about 10 years, at the average age of the successful fishermen out here at the top level of Bassmaster tournaments. And the, and the big thing, in my opinion, is all the access to knowledge you have at your fingertips now when you're 10 years old that you did not have. You had Bassmaster Magazine and you had Outdoor Live, Field and Stream, and that was really it. Not all that long ago in the 70s and, and, and 80s. And then Bob Cobb on TN, TNN, uh, you know, we all watch that. But they you just have so much access to knowledge and techniques, baits, patterns that we didn't have years ago. One, two, three, four. I got to say it because I know the viewers think it, it also has to, you have to, this top 10, you have to parallel with the technique that's catching them sure. too. Certainly that is part of it. That is part of it. A lot of factors. I mean, obviously a giant influx of a lot of young anglers just a few years ago. They're around somewhere. May mean absolutely nothing, but he does have it in his boat right now. Bottom corner, you see Alex Redwine. This morning, I am walking towards the dock. 
I've never done this before, but I, I, you know, you're kicking stones, walking up to the dock. I kick something, and I look down, and what is it? It's a wine cork. <laughs> so I brought it to him, and he kind of said, no, I'm not a superstitious guy, but he did ask for it afterwards. And I said, is this a foreshadowing of what's going to happen here today? So, what? I mean, if the kid can pull it out, uh, it's a so cute yeah, story. Uh, I feel it like we're still around story. the right type of fish. Um, God, I just wish I knew a better or different way to get him to bite. Um, I've, between the Dominki and a spy bait, um, I lost a pretty decent one on a spy bait about 30 or 40 minutes ago. Um, but like I said, I feel like I, I know I'm around the right size. It's just makes you want to like put your head through a brick wall just trying to get them to bite. Um, I feel like there definitely is another way to get them to bite. I'm just not sure what that way is. But hopefully we can just keep putzing around and actually hook some of these suckers. We're going to stay positive, though. He may take that cork and just throw it out of his boat shortly. <laughs> so was it his cork or you? you no, but he, I mean, he, he's you presented it to him now as his cork. Well, so yeah. He, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, you'll throw it back at me if it doesn't work out. But it was just, I mean, how often have you just been walking along and you see a wine cork? And, I like, agree. I literally picked it up and looked up, and he was right there. And I was like. But that wine cork is not oh, allowing him to chase down the prince of Japanese angling yet. Koya Fujita. What a year he's having. And Cody Huff was kind of the odds on favor to win last year's Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year. But, but then we met Jay Shakira. <laughs> With a very strong finish. Uh, Cody was right there, but when a, Jay went to Thousand yeah, Islands and won that event with over 100 pounds. Ooh, That's what I'm talking about. We'll have some of that. We will have some of that. So do you think we'll break 100 pounds next week? It's 100% all up to the weather. It always is. But I think so. I honestly do think so. I think Peroznik oh, said yeah, on stage yesterday yeah. he thinks the whole top 10 will have 100 pounds. And I, we were trying to get through the way in, or I would have stopped him and said, what? So like, I mean, I hope they do as the MC. It nice would be wonderful. But to add to the party. 100 pounds of smallmouth bass is a lot. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I like Peroznik a lot. Uh -huh. And he has All called, he's a great, great, great All fisherman. But sometimes he gets a little excited when he's on stage with you. I think you make him nervous or something. And he, he's always the optimist uh, about hey. the next day or the next tournament. Hey, I, I, I hope he's right, Davey. Oh, absolutely. Cody Huff doing some calling and having a good time on the water, but winning this tournament would be huge for him. I like that. <laughs> Man, it'd be special. Uh, you know, I, my wife and I were just talking about it last night. You know, you you come to these tournaments and you fish them all, and until you win one, it just you don't always think about it. You know what I mean? It kind of seems impossible until it happens. Uh, so it would be very, very special. It would be awesome for, for my career and my family, and it would just... It'd be really good timing. Oh my gosh, this place is fun. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Welcome back to our on location coverage. Lakeside, Lake Champlain for the eighth stop of the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. This, of course, the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite. 
at Lake Champlain and Plattsburgh, New York has been a great host this week. Let's have a look at our TH Marine current conditions. Currently 67 degrees, cloudy with a north wind at 10 miles per hour. 10 mile an hour, a little bumpy on some parts of the lake. We were out there this morning and it's uh, 10 mile an hour is great. And then you round the corner, headed out into the Inland Sea and it's like, whoa, this is a lot more than 10 miles per hour. This place is incredible. Wes Miller said when I saw him a little earlier today, Lake Champlain does not like people. It is just brutal on you to be out there each and every day running 20, 30, 40 miles. So check out Patrick Walters' new championship Monday shorts. They just uh -huh. jump out at you, don't they? They definitely are something. <laughs> they, were, they were a topic at takeoff this morning. I mean, he's so put together from the belt line up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tucked in, always on point. I mean, his mustache at times a little disheveled, but so put together. It is like the mullet of people. <laughs> <laughs> Business on the top and party down below. <laughs> Good fish here for Patrick Walters. Uh, one of the few anglers been using a jerk bait a lot, but obviously not with this particular fish. Oh! <laughs> bait fell out. Like I just grabbed him in the bait. Was, Boop. Three nine. Shorts didn't get any longer, did they, Dig? <laughs> <laughs> a little different color, but you're right. Uh, the exact same size. Same same cut, same style. That just, I don't believe that, you know? I know. From Patrick Walters. I mean, now we hook up with right Matt now. Robertson in our two box. His third top ten this season. Don't drop, dude. You know, he's had a good season. Third top ten, but he's had a few tournaments that he didn't make top ten that he led, you know, on day one and then have a bad day two or have a bad day one and have a great day two. It's been up and down, but three top tens is nothing to sneeze at. Don't jump. It really feels like he's kind of made that shift to try and win now. You know, yeah. and he might have been conservative in be times in the past, but now it's he swings. I think once he got his driveway, driveway done and had the concrete, that was his goal oh, for the yeah. first year, year and a half on the Elite Series. Once he got that done, he's swinging for the fence trying to get a win. <laughs> don't you agree? I don't know what it has to do with the driveway, no, no but thing. sure. I mean, a concrete driveway will make a man confident. I will say this for Matt Roberts. I was out on the water today, and there's one angler fishing the New York side. So he has won the New York Lake Champlain event. The other nine are over in the Inland Sea. So he has he's chosen to stay away from the crowd or the crowd that caught the most fish, let's, let's say that. So there's a fair amount of anglers that fished in the area that he's in. So, and he's the only one that made a top 10 from there. He was also the only one that trash talked the Prince this morning. I don't think Quia paid attention at did all. Did he even really. understand it? If he no, did, he no, didn't no. pay attention. He really is, wasn't even at the dock yet. I mean, Quia <laughs> comes at his time. Cool when, when the prince wants to arrive, he arrives. I've noticed that. I've noticed that. In no hurry. Bryant Smith. A highly hyped rookie from the West Coast and backed it up this season. His second top 10 and in third place in our Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year race. Oh, it's a giant. I'm pretty sure it's a giant. Which doesn't even seem right because you look at who's ahead of him. Joey Sefuentes is one, two, and Koya Vegeta. I mean, they're yes. those. There we go. Most years, he would Ryan Smith would be leading. He would be leading. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He's had a, had a good year. Good, solid year. 
real good fish here for Brian Smith. Definitely help him. Smallest fish, 212. Stop, 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 stop. Don't do it. It's a good one. Not a giant, it's a good one. Waves building a little up. It looks like he's on the north end of those islands in the inland sea that most of these anglers are fishing around. There's Night Island being one of the biggest right there. About three islands right there together that are creating this stronger current where these bait fish and smallmouth seem to be all oh, wow. migrating to. Those islands are so big, you can actually get get out of the wind if you want to get on, you know, the downside. Obviously, the direction has changed. Today it's out of the north, Man, but those I islands have bigger. never been here. They're so big that it's. I guess I've just been catching small ones all day, so it looked bigger. You can you can get out of those waves just moving around those islands in the inland sea. Three quarter. I think, and I know it's Championship Monday. We only got ten anglers out, but I think it's today is the only time I've gone through the gut, both both narrows, the gut itself. The only time, whether it's the first day or the final day, down to ten Absolutely. anglers, that there that I did not day. see an angler in the gut or in in those two entr the entrances or exits. Everybody is out. Yeah. Offshore over really that deep water. Don't do that again. That was one of those no brainers where they meet you halfway up. I gotta be honest, I'll Man, open up to you, Davey. I have a hard him. time with Actually, Brian Smith. Actually make a good cast out of him. Because That's the whole this week, is... several times we had Brian Smith and Brian Schmidt. It cross threads my brain. I just got to be honest. I'm just, I'm going to apologize because the mistake is coming. And speaking of mistakes, no mistake that once again, Koya Fujita is hooked up. I didn't want to mention this until he put that fish in the boat. I didn't want to jinx it. It's really been amazing how few fish we've seen loss here this week. These smallmouth bass, you know, two and a half to four and a half pounds, most of them. And I think that's, you know, obviously the anglers are, are great at what they do, but the equipment, you know, from the hooks, the line, the, you know, so many things that not just forward facing sonar have changed our sport. The equipment and the, you know, what these anglers use has gotten better and better. A little slower for Koya today. He's had most of his weight in the previous three days by about this time. Why do you think it's slower? Just the change of wind direction or, or pressure? Uh, uh -huh. I think more the change of wind direction has been so cloudy and some rain out there today uh, has just made it slower. I, I can't give you a an honest, a good honest answer about pressure with what they're doing, to be honest with you, because this is new. Yeah. Part of me is like, how in the world could those fish be pressured when, yeah, there's nine of our 10 anglers in the inland sea, but that's like a, a whole lake in itself and they're fishing 25 to 90 feet of water. The, you know, are they fishing for the same fish? It's hard to think so. I would think they would replenish. Uh, but but here's one thing, being out there today, that I, I absolutely believe is is something that I haven't talked about yet. I saw Koya. He would, yeah, he's searching for fish, but he had certain areas that he would really search, and then he would get away from that area, then he would come back. And I think current seams 
or a big deal out in that open water like that. Um, we talk about current, and the current is certainly picks up around those islands and where it gets shallower. Oh. Uh, but I still think those fish and the bait fish use those current seams. And, and if you can figure out where that seam is each day, rather than just a needle in the haystack like a lot of guys, it Whoa. looks like a lot of guys are literally doing that. I don't think it's... I don't think the top guys are just needle in a haystack kind of looking with forward facing sonar. I think there's some rhyme and reason with where they are related to current. When it comes to pressure, I would wonder, I mean, a lot of times when you go to real, I think we saw it in Wahi. When you go to places or you access a fish that has seen zero pressure, it, it almost that sometimes it feels like they're more susceptible to pressure. Right. I mean, if you go to a lot of the northern fisheries that don't fit, it's like it goes from zero to 100, and although the pressure isn't much. Yeah. They get conditioned to everything, yeah. even pressure, or the lack thereof. Like I mentioned, going in and out of the gut, there's always boats going through there, so those fish that are living around there, they those boats don't disturb them, don't don't change what they're doing at all. You go to a place where there's very little boat traffic and you run 30 boats through yeah. there, then it three, it three affects five. them. Right. Fish now. Oh, okay. Three five. Popular boat dock in a marina, you know. Yeah. But, but people are those fish don't get right. Rattled by they a boat. They don't spook because they, yeah, somebody walks out on the dock or a boat pulls up. I believe that's Sego. Sego no. was in a different boat. Maybe not Sego. <laughs> Maybe his. Uh, Translator that we see at weigh in a lot with him. Well, I'm hoping his translator comes up and stays with us <laughs> today. I am currently in negotiations with photographer Sago to make sure he's our translator. Koya Fujita, man, living up to the hype. Everybody talked about it, just like Brian Smith. It, he was highly hyped. People said, this guy, watch out yeah. for Koya Fujita. And everything he accomplished in Japan, he couldn't fish tournaments till you're, you're not allowed to fish tournaments until you're 18 in Japan. He started focusing on making it to here when he was 25. So between basically the ages of 18 and 25, he's won four Angler of the Years, six major tournaments and man to come here and to make four out of eight top tens unbelievable really and is. i mean <laughs> unless some thunder happens he's going to be an elite series champion i mean it's unbelievable and that's not shocking that you hear that music because with a resume like that and with what he is doing he will be your powerful replay of the day. Yeah, cool. Fujita with a four and a half pounder during our break. Haven't been really easy for him today. Yesterday he had all four pounders, but a lot slower start for him today. The wind changing out of the north has, has certainly changed things up for him, but he's been solid all week, and certainly that four and a half pounder will go a long, long way to help him hold that first trophy over his head. Well, it's going to all go down this afternoon. A very rare championship Monday way in here in beautiful Plattsburgh, New York. So if you're anywhere around, get down here. It's going to happen at 3 o'clock. If you can't make it, don't worry. Tune in on Bassmaster.com and we'll see. Can anybody topple Mount Fujita? Koya atop our Yeti hot seat and man, how impressive is this guy? Absolutely. 
Absolutely incredible. That's why he had to be our power pole replay of the day. Yeah! A glitter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Welcome back on location coverage, Plattsburgh, New York, Lake Champlain for the eighth stop of the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. The Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. 10 anglers remain and that'll look of our reigning Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year, Jay Secure, but that'll give you an idea of how our anglers in the top 10 are spread out. And as you said, Davey, I, Matt Robertson, the only one in New York. <laughs> he really, and that, that map really doesn't do it justice if you've ever been to Lake Champlain. It looks like, yeah, they're spread out by a few hundred yards, maybe a mile, but that's probably 10 miles or so between Matt Robertson and the other nine anglers in our top 10. Let's get out to West Coast rookie fishing his second championship round, Bryant Smith. It's good to see them the way they were fishing. He is on the north end of that island. Another good one for Brian. Is this that skinny one I caught yesterday? No, it's not. <laughs> that one will help a little bit. <laughs> so you mentioned the names are similar. Eat it. Just eat it. Oh, Schmidt man. and Smith. They have been doing everything but eating it. Certainly think me. about Schmidt when you come to Lake Champlain. Yeah. It's a little later than when we were here last year. But he hasn't been dominant here just in one month. He is always a factor in his, uh, it makes you wonder about uh, how many of those wins would he have if anglers had the technology they have now? Because he fishes isolated yeah. cover uh, and structure, rock piles, grass right beds, grabbed boat got docks, distracted that sort by that of thing. pesky bass fishing. Yep. <laughs> Where did he finish? I think he had a decent finish. Oh, I'm sure he did. I, he certainly did, but I mean, certainly had to be the odds on favor coming in here. Number one. 17. Good finish. Yeah. I think any angler before they leave home and drive. I don't know where we're getting, but we're To an getting. elite event. You want to win every one of them, but a 17 is certainly not a bad event, but. He's having a great season. Yes, he what is. A quiet, great season. Once again, over to the prince of Japanese angling, Hoya Fujita. So, Davey, backstage, I mean, I, I never get to see. I get to see him in the morning and stuff, but what is Hoya? like back does he interact with the other anglers not a lot a, a little bit uh and and obviously the language barrier he's gotten his english has gotten a lot better in in just a few months um while I, there at murray i tried to oh, you know interact with him quite a bit he's a lot better now but he's very focused and i, I think even when he gets fluent english and can, you know, have conversations yeah, real easily with all the anglers. I don't know if he's going to be that kind of guy. I think he's more to himself. I think he rooms by himself. The fact that he comes to the takeoffs later, I don't think he wants all that interaction and all the time on his hands around people. I could be wrong, but that's the way I've been reading him. Well, I believe the prince, I mean, he only communicates with the royal correspondence. <laughs> yes. I will say, though, very, very... Oh my God. Polite. Man. Very. Oh. I don't think he's going to have the, you know, 
humor that Taku has. Taku just, you know, he likes to laugh. He likes to make you laugh. And he knows he plays that, that game, which we all love so much. I don't think we're going to see that from Kyoya. Another guy who's unflappable, Jay Shakurat. You know, when I do those top 10 intros that are as ridiculous as they are, I mean, I really, I honestly yesterday tried to get some emotion out of him. I was inches from his face, screaming in his face. And it, <laughs> it was the yeah. blindest stare ever. I but mean, it's a just, smile. It's a, a, smile, it's a yeah. smile and a blind just stare. doesn't get rattled. Yeah. And no matter what you say to him, it's always that same smile and a, yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's also what makes him as incredible as an angler as he is, or as incredible of a competitive angler as he is. So I apologize for not knowing this. He's not married, right? He's still dating the hockey yeah. player? Yeah. So I guess you have to kind of be... Put pressure on him, Davey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you just have to... Maybe watch your words when you are dating a hockey player. You know that? I mean, if <laughs> so you, you want to keep that's your, why he's quiet? If you want to keep your teeth. <laughs> I mean, you're not married to a hockey player. You can't appreciate what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> Power twitch, switch or whatever. You don't back talk a hockey so player, do you? You don't know my wife, uh, Sarah, an incredible hockey player, player right winger. Fish. Sniper shot. Really? <laughs> really. Alternate for the Canadian women team. Maybe, maybe not. Well, why am just to check? I'm telling you, man, that power switch is the deal. Getting eight up. Berkeley power switch. Came out of ICAST, one of the baits specifically designed for forward facing sonar. Gets down quick, but also you're able to see it better. You're able to see the bait better. So tell me more about that. I heard about that at ICAST. What is it the material they use or what's what's the yeah. deal there? It's the material they use. I believe it's a tungsten base too, which tungsten's harder and right. shows up better on sonar. See? Most unorganized. Don't they can't even find the scale. We keep talking about how calm and organized all these guys are, and now yeah. for something completely different. Right. Matt Robertson. Why do I feel like I His was boat looks a little different than Koya's. Brian Smith. Uh, yeah. Hooked what up. did you just call him, <laughs> Davey? See? Stop it. <laughs> Hello. I had never done that until you brought it up. Now no, I'll no. do it like every third time. Then it won't seem bad when I do it. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I'm okay if they're separate, but when they're like, you introduce them back to back, like a takeoff or something like that, it just cross threads my brain. Gosh dang it. I knew that was coming. Ooh. I knew that was coming. Don't set your drag right. You don't catch the fish. That was totally on me. Just when I mentioned that we haven't seen many fish lost like we normally do in smallmouth events, well, I jinxed. Mr. Smith, beautiful jump. That's what we like about a smallmouth bass, but that's not what we like to happen in the Bassmaster tournaments. As the great Bob Cobb would say, the thrill of victory and the agony of angling right there. 
But let's make a move right now. Up the lake to the youngest competitor on the Bassmaster Elite Series, Alex Redwine, fishing his very first championship round. Alex Redwine, obviously a roommate of Jay Shakurik. They went out right behind each other this morning in order, and they both kind of commented on how special that was yeah, to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. There was some disagreement whether, you know, who should win or whatever, but I'm sure they'll figure that out, or maybe Koya will figure it out for them. I haven't seen them. my fish in a while, so I guess I'll look to see if it's any bigger than that one. I guess I'll double check. Alex Redwine doing some culling. Great to have him in his very first top 10 on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And although it was first, he still took time to help us out with our Bass Pro Shops top lures. Oh, well, here we are, Lake Champlain. I uh, caught a lot of my smallmouth on day one and day two, a couple key fish on the Berkeley Gulp Minnow. Uh, just kind of dropping it around, either isolated fish or groups of fish that are relating to bait. There's a lot of small alewives in this lake. Uh, so I'm just dropping this around. It imitates those alewives really well and what other forages and whatever other forages in Lake Champlain, it's just able to be kind of finessey enough where I can trigger some of those big small mouths to bite. Yeah! Another! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Less than two hours fishing time remaining on the last day of this tournament. Eighth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite here on Lake Champlain. Now we have got these 10 anglers who have survived from three days of angling interrupted by one postponed day right there and we're going to see how they finish up who's going to be the closer today welcome back welcome to the Bassmaster Studios sponsored by Marathon Tommy Sanders Ronnie Moore Mike Sukon and of course Mark Zona joins us as well and Z uh, you know we never like it when somebody can just go on a little run and run away from everybody else on a final day like that and sort of take the take the competition element out of play hasn't happened yet really no, yeah, the, the door was kind of a little bit, I, and granted, I think we were manufacturing that the door was open, but you have to give a big, as much as we've goofed around and, and you know, talked about how mysterious Koya Fujita is, what he's done here uh, on Lake Champlain uh, across the board, really for all four days, has been unbelievable because there was a time on this lake, Tommy, uh, that, man, you catch 18 to, to 20 pounds, you're in the hunt to to hold a blue trophy that has not been the case this time around and, and it's been literally flawless and awesome to watch what this young man has done he is truly he is the real deal there's no doubt about it no question about that ronnie moore by this time the past three days we've had man. six or seven people with 20 pounds already we're not even close to that yet. yeah it does like we were talking about with z right there the door did feel wide open we have a lot of guys around that 17 18 pound mark and then Huff and Atkins trying to chip away at that two and three quarter lead. They've got just over 19 pounds, but no one has really had that above average deal with that low skies, the wind coming from a different direction, pressure on these fish. It obviously looks like that we're not going to see many, if any, 21 plus pound bags today, which was really going to be necessary for guys to catch up to Fujita there uh, other than having him really slip. And I, we didn't see that coming at all. A, a big slip from him. Suits a big development as we near the end of this tournament here? I say there's a chance. Cody Huff and uh, Atkins both have three, four pounders in their limit, and they have beat what they need weight-wise to top Fujita. 
Vegeta could still close the door, but they could also oh, yeah. get one of those five pluses and, and the make it a real game. Is closed. Right. We, the door we're, we're up for is anything, closed. that is for sure. <laughs> the door is closed. The in the house. are coming from the house. The calls are coming from <laughs> the inside. The call is coming from inside the house. Okay. <laughs> Going to get out right very now with Brian Smith. And it was, Tommy, it was very interesting listening to Dave and Davey's show yet again. And I heard Davey school make time. the comment that, you know, the, there are people time. that love that right there. They love forward-facing yeah. sonar. There's people that don't. Oh. There are anglers that are very good oh with forward-facing sonar, but are a little bit against it. I, it. It was interesting to hearing Davey say it's something we should talk about. Yeah, he did um, say that. I, I am, I'm all for it, man. But here, I, do, do I think it's a little absurd when their guys have four to five live transducers on their boat? It's a little bit. It's a little bit absurd, <laughs> but. I, hey, to me, and everybody has an opinion on this, and, and I love listening to all sides of it. Um, this We've learned things in this tournament because of forward-facing sonar and, and really the last two years of Bassmaster is about learning how to catch more fish, and, yeah. and this does it. It does it. And the other thing, Tommy, it's like when they we outlawed the umbrella rig. I was totally against that because people said – a any fool can go out and throw that and, and catch a bass. That's not true. And and fish have become conditioned to it. Fish are going to become conditioned to this technology. It, 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 it is, there is no doubt fish, Mother Nature will teach her babies how to avoid, you know, this style at times, but I, I don't know. I'm all for it. That was great uproar when someone came out with the first 150 horsepower engine. I mean, wet fishing's not about running around at top speed on lakes and stuff like that. And, you know, it's just, it just takes a while for people to adapt I, to things. I don't know how well we'll adapt. In, in just a few, a little while here on the show, we're gonna have to go through a, 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 an update on what these guys have been doing all day long. It's gonna be the same thing for each and every right. one of them. That, That's the hard part. What does suck is calling a tournament where every person, yes. I've always said this about sight fishing tournaments, sight fishing tournaments are hard because everybody's doing yes. really the same thing, exactly. maybe using a little bit of a different lure. Wow. It, it makes it hard to commentate at times, it makes yeah, it hard to watch. But I also feel oh, when we are holy. able across the board to here, split buddy. screen what they're looking at, that will make it more compelling. At this point, we're, we're not quite there. And the other side, Tommy, I see the purists of no you know i want to go back to what denny brower texted man i'll go back to a flipping stick and a jig up in missacoy bay i do too right now um but but i i, I see every side of it yes, but i do think what's amazing about it is it has Let's taught us things it. that we thought bass do mm -hmm. now we know what they do and a lot of it is a lot of the adapting to that is on us I mean, we're going to have to figure out better ways to tell stories and, and figure out, you know, what's behind yeah. a better performance, why some people don't do so well at that. And that's part of the learning look, process, too. Look at it like this, though. And this, this is a challenge. Yeah. We just got done with Lake St. Clair, four straight days of forward-facing sonar, four straight days of it here. It's going right to be now. four straight days of it in St. Lawrence River Absolutely. in a week. That's a, that's a challenge. And, and again, the lake the lake needs to set up for it and definitely obviously when you go north this time of year it sets up for it tommy what do you think of it friendo well i'm just you know i've i've seen it seen it coming for a while but i just you know this year has been just total immersion it's like dipping your toe in it the previous yeah, years and man we were just we were thrown off the deep end <laughs> into here so I, it's hard yeah I just it's it's, it's uh, you know it's anything that's presents a big challenge to you that you don't know the instant answer for is yeah it's a little per perplexing but also interesting and and and, and a challenge to, to be faced up to whether we Look, had somebody would have lost somebody would have lost money if you'd have said Oh, I saw Okeechobee and Seminole being one for facing sonar. None of us saw that no. coming. No. So. Ronnie, what were you going to say? I, I was going to jump in and say that, that smallmouth tournaments on, have been awesome when we've been doing largemouth tournaments all year. But for fans in general, in the history of Bassmaster Live, 
they have not been the most interesting tournaments in general. I agree. And that was when they were staring at 2D, and they had plenty of time in between casts to talk. Now they're just staring at something that has their attention because they know they're not just oh, bob down, bobbing around <laughs> aimlessly. There is a target there, so they're more keened in and focused on it, so it almost seems like they're ignoring the camera more by not talking to us, but when we see those glimpses of Cody Huff's graph, when we get the chance to yep. show Mega Live when we do it, that Agreed. paints the picture. But when you put the best rods, reels in line, we've seen that for years. The Elite Series guys have had things that the common angler doesn't necessarily have every day to use, the, the most expensive stuff. When you put the best technology in the best angler's hands in the world, they make it look so easy that anyone can do it, and that's not the case. You go out there in four foot waves with forward facing sonar, and you're learning it for the first few days. You're not going to catch what they catch. You may catch one here and there, but you're not going to catch them like these guys are catching them right now. It's not a foolproof yes. thing. And we're yes. still going to go to places like the Harris chain and, and places where we'll be up close to the bank. We'll be we'll be shallow. That'll look different. That's gonna that's gonna break things up and make things more interesting as well. I remember the first live event classic we ever did. Uh, you know, out in the middle, a lot of the anglers were fishing deep, doing you know a lot of the techniques similar to what we're doing here. And I remember Takahiro Mori turning to the camera uh, after sitting there for two hours. Fishing real deep, turning the camera and say, this is why people think fishing is boring. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was on Lake, it was on Lake Hartwell. Lake I remember Hartwell. that. Yes, absolutely. It, it, you know, it, it, and, and here's really the uh, look. I was with uh, I, Ronnie. I've told you this story. I was with Corey Johnston on Lake Ontario taping his own show and we were out in the depths, forward facing sonar catching giants on camera and i finally looked at him at 10 30 and i said dude i cannot do this i can't i can't do it let's just go throw a bladed jig in three foot of water please i don't care if they're as big it's just more fun so it's an interesting conversation but my perspective on it is someone who does not use it religiously doesn't my fishing style wouldn't be conducive to it i like fishing in a foot of water with top water flipping, moving baits, all that stuff. I see the, the benefits of it to our sport, and I feel like when we all get behind it negatively, we're only hurting nice our ones. sport from growing to a bigger level. I, absolutely. It, it's the silliest thing when I see the lack of change. Like we want to go back to Jim Brown and leather football helmets because that was the purest form of guys tackling each other. Right. That is just not Persimmon what drivers. you do. Yeah. 50 yeah. years down the road if you want no. to progress and change. Do Converse shoes work? Yeah, do they get worn in the NBA now? Heck no, they don't. No, no I, I actually do want to see linemen <laughs> knocking the heck out yeah. of quarterbacks again. <laughs> I want it to, it's, it, it's turned a little bit into flag football in a weird way well. because of Tom Brady, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's a good conversation. I, it, uh, and yeah. I, I don't know, again, I. I don't think you ever want to stop technology, especially when we learn from it. But I, I do see all sides of it. And, and, and Dave's I mean, right. Look, we we agree. having Trust conversations. Me. We is have great. to watch it all. It's really good. Hey, and, and there's a there's a there's guys that'll admit it. There's guys that have forward facing sonar that suck at it. <laughs> yeah. I made the comment yesterday afternoon, Tommy, while we're talking about this. We're going to listen to Alex Rudwin. Stand by. Yeah, uh, my day. Man, it's been a battle. Um, I think these fish are just getting so conditioned. It's And every once in a while, I'll hook one, and it'll either be small, or I'll, it'll come up and jump, and I'll lose it. Um, we're not giving up yet. You know, it's 115. Um, like I said, we're just we're just like four or five of the right cast away, um, the right fish away into biting, it's, and we're kind of at least back in this thing somewhat. Um, but it's definitely been a little frustrating, pretty frustrating day. I'm not sure what how to sum it up. Um, it just I honestly kind of can't wait until after the weigh-in just so I can see what other people are getting to get these things to bite. I feel like I've just tried what's worked. And of course one 
Uh, I feel like I've tried what's worked the last few days and like right, like I just cast it at two and it's like they peak interest, they follow it for about five seconds and then they just disappear and don't give you another chance or they move. Um, but it's all, it's, it's definitely new to me. I feel like I've been learning a lot just about how these smallmouth behave and um, just kind of what gets them to trigger to bite. Like I said, I'm pretty excited to, after the weigh-in, to hopefully get the details on how uh, Koi is catching them. I mean, he's probably only 200 feet away from me right now, and but yeah, that's been my day so far. Kind of frustrating. Not a lot of big fish, but we're gonna stay positive. We still got plenty of time. I mean, we're here on we're here on the top 10 day, the final championship day. So I mean, I can't complain that much. I mean, if I'm gonna have a little hiccup of a day, might as well do it today. So we're gonna keep trying, keep casting that fish, and hopefully a few of them get the hook in their mouth. His weights have gone down one pound exactly each day from 22.14 to 19.14. Yeah, the comment that I made yesterday, Tommy, it is uh, I said there are going to be college, high school college anglers that fish the Bassmaster Elite Series probably long after we're gone. Right. That that this is all they're go they're going to be shiners. They're going to go out and all they're going to do is use forward facing sonar. And, and I made the comment, you, you're going to see, a you used to, you would always hear to survive on the Elite Series, you need to be very versatile. And I think there will be <laughs> anglers that are not as well-rounded coming out of college, but they'll be very well-rounded with this and make it adapt to different lakes. We will see it in one foot out to a hundred feet in the next three, well, now. Yeah. And Tommy, something, you look at Cody Huff, you look at Cody Huff, we've never seen Cody Huff on camera not staring at his screen. We've never seen him just bassing. It, it, it is what it is. On the Elite Series, now we saw him right. flipping a dock with a spoon to win the championship. We saw him fishing grass edges with a top water and a bladed jig to win the bracket at Watts Bar. You know, like, these guys get hey. to the Elite Series in other ways, and then they just have to use this, even if it's not their bread and butter, because they need to survive. I, I just got a text from Jesse Wiggins, who's a gr great friend and and a phenomenal bass fisherman used to fish the elite series the still does pretty awesome fishing and he said hey it's not whether i'm for forward facing sonar or against it but don't treat it like the umbrella rig and just get rid of it if it gets more people into fishing and teaches us more about bass fishing and how to catch bass he's all for it and i, and I re again i respect every view on it i do Oh, Jiffy Wiggins. Yeah. <laughs> I miss saying that, Tommy. <laughs> yes. Well, that, you know, the genie's out of the bottle now. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to, to go backwards. You, know, you don't really want to go backwards, you know, but you just want to try to find a way to make, make everyone adapt, you know, in, in a way that's sensible. And, and, you know, to see more of it and to see it in more different now, situations look, is going yeah. to help that. You know. Listen, I did. I, I, I've i done a lot of it. I've taped shows on it. I'm not going to lie, man. I When I saw some boats up in Detroit that had five transducers on them, I was like, whoa, you are trying to find E.T. Like yeah. you're trying to contact <laughs> alien, extraterrestrials with this stuff. <laughs> I think one of them's leading this tournament. <laughs> and at the end of the day, we want to see the best in the world put out the best yes. product. Do we want to see a three to seven football game? Sometimes you do like to see that in the snow, just like we'll see a lay lake get one up in the dirt. But we really do like seeing 48 to 51 Mahomes and Josh Allen going back and forth scoring sure. until the very last second. And that's what we get. Uh, on these smallmouth events with forward-facing sonar. Bassmaster Live. Meanwhile, back on the lake, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the pound tournament. 12, hey. the 12 ounces behind. Kiwi Fujita is Cody Huff, pound 13 ounces behind. Justin Atkins, so those are the three at the top of our leaderboard right now. The three we'll be watching very, very closely as we get uh, down to the last, we're getting closer to the last hour of fishing. 
Oh, we were live during that whole <laughs> I thought we were having a meeting. I'm sorry. I thought I told you we were live. Justin Atkins, Alex Redwine, Ryan Smith, Matt Robertson. Still looking for some big ones to show up. Austin Felix, same story with him as well. We'll be breaking away and coming right back. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha. Toyota. And by Dakota Lithium. That's a bad weather on schedule day number two of this tournament, but we are getting our four days in. Let's, uh, Mark Zona, take a look at our Yamaha midday report. Why don't we do that, Tommy? Looking at Justin Atkins right here, fishing on the west side of Damius Island, which has been a big player in this tournament. So many tournaments in years past in the Inland Sea doing something a little bit different from a lot of our other leaders in this tournament. A quarter ounce underspin with a Berkeley flatworm. Had to mix with the colors a little bit when we had dark skies on the second day of competition, which honestly feels like it was about three months ago really concentrating on hard cabbage lines off the west side of Damius Island. And the, what he said, those wolf packs would kind of run the wall of grass and compress a lot of the ale wipe against that grass. That's when he would shine with his underspin unofficially setting with 19 pounds and seven ounces. Our leader from day number one, Cody Huff, had fallen down a couple of three places over the next two days, but uh, getting right back up there today. And now in second place. Yeah, and Cody Huff fishing a little bit north of the islands in the Inland Sea with a VMC jig head all the way up to a half ounce when we got had rough conditions. A full size Strike King Z2 trying to mimic a lot of the bait fish out there deep. And Cody Huff made the comment he felt that bigger soft plastic definitely brought a little bit more quality in his into his boat for the simple fact. Cody Huff definitely had a lot of company around him throughout the tournament, like a lot of our Go other leaders. Go there. Came out firing 23 pounds plus on day number one. Knocked out up about three pounds on day number two, but uh, day number three bounced back again. And Koya Fujita has been the story of this tournament, absolutely relentless and dominating since the second day. Exactly right. And for obviously not having all that much experience on the lakes along the Bassmaster Elite Series trail. What he has done here on Lake Champlain, very, very impressive to find two of the most popular smallmouth areas throughout the decades in the Inland Sea, the east side of Damius Island, City Reef on the west side of the Inland Sea, and really watching, he has been flawless the entire tournament. A small. What he said was a jig head minnow throughout the event, like so many of your leaders. Really, it's been a flawless performance so far for the rookie in the Bassmaster Elite Series. Right now, unofficially sitting with 18 pounds, seven ounces. That is your midday report. Thank you very much, C. Let's get out to Bryant Smith. Our super rookie, certainly this season, and having a super tournament here. It will be interesting to see where this goes next. Like, are, are, is there going to be a transducer that can shoot out like four miles and you can be like, hey, there's there's a pot well, of them. I, I, I think it's, it's going to be linked up with your trolling motor is what it is. I mean, with the actual motion of your boat so that it's going to be hunting and, and taking you to the next spot. Right. You know, that is <laughs> schedule. I'll say Z in the saltwater tournaments that I cover, <laughs> so, you know, when we're not doing the elite series, there is that technology and yes. it may do it. A, a mile or half a mile out there, and it costs a little bit more than our units. Hey, do. Ronnie, <laughs> there might be some of that saltwater technology on some of the boats we've been watching this year. Mm, that's crazy. So making checks and winning events is essential for them just to pay back their equipment costs. I got you. That's how it works. <laughs>
I, I literally, I remember, Tommy, you know this story. Jason Christie kind of won the, one of the first big tournaments doing this with okay. forward facing and I'll never forget him coming in and he was trying to describe what, when he won on St. Clair, he's like, I don't think I would have won without it. And I kind of rolled my eyes with whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, he's like, no. And he tried describing it. And I fast forward to, fish this is before I ever witnessed it with my eyes. I was covering Clark Wendelin uh, on location at St. Clair and Clark said, don't, don't hit your trolling motor. There's one right underneath you threw his drop shot and caught a four and a half pounder. And I was like, whoa, what, what is that voodoo pounder. witchcraft? <laughs> it's this magic of I which hope. you speak. That is, yeah. Oh, that was a cool vibe. <laughs> Just get the attention of one of them. And they both came up and they both nipped at it a couple times and just kind of let it swing there and yes. Just let it swing there and she finally loaded up. Just go tick, tick, tick. If you jerk, they're done. Just let it swing. Finally, four pounder. Now we can get rid of number five. Super slow start today for Bryant Smith, but he was not yes. discouraged yeah. in the least. Man, he was he has been super positive all day long. And I'll show it soon at the screen with the, the mapping to show where he was poking around when he was 15 feet. Thanks, dude. You know what it was really shallow area that Z was talking about. He was catching oh. two pounders. That it's not far at all from where all the deeper water is. So a little exploration for him, but didn't reveal any big ones. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, may I be so bold as to ask, could you show a picture of those ale wife that uh, oh, Scott yeah, Canterbury right. and ready. Brandon yeah. Pollock? They were ready too. That'd be awesome. Yep. Awesome. I think a lot of our friends that don't fish up north don't even basically what a ale wife is, is a shad without a dot on the side of its gill plate. Giving this one some attention for sure. Uh, so, God, he looked way bigger. Did he not, or was I just? He did when he jumped. Was I just seeing stuff? <laughs> My depth perception is way off. It's been too long, I guess. Yeah, all right, exactly. like to be grabbed. But he got bellied. <laughs> Went for the grab the first time. <laughs> he didn't like it. Yeah, that was a little better maybe.
There's so many fish around on this bank. They're probably over there where we've been fishing to this whole time. Yeah, what's amazing with those Turks and Caicos shorts, there was a time probably he walked out this morning. He's like, I look good today. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> What does it look good, feel good, play good? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Like, if I saw him in a gas station, I'd be like, there he is. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Z, ask and you shall receive. We'll bring it into the Dakota Lithium screen of knowledge to show off some of those bait fish photos from some of our anglers on the water this week to show the size and the color. Obviously, the comparison to most normal baits. This was sent in to you by Brandon Polinick, I believe, and you can see a couple that came in on the hooks of that crankbait, um, or maybe the fish that bit that spit those up. But Alewife, perfect small little bait fish. You can see this shot of Scott Canterbury, I believe, holding a small mouth with a jig head minnow bait in his in the fish's mouth with. Uh, a couple different alewife in there. They do actually, they're not just silver and black. There's a little bit of a yellow or a little bit of a orangish streak in them at, at the back as well, uh, at least on those bait fish in, in Scott Canterbury's mouth. And that's why for some of our Bass Pro Shops top lures, if not all of them, someone has incorporated a jig head with a soft plastic uh, jerk bait style lure like the Z2 here for Jay Shakurit. And then we go over to uh, Alex Redwine using a Ber Ber Berkeley Gulp minnow as well with that same jig head. And then also Cody Huff throwing a bigger five inch soft plastic jerk bait on his VMC jig head. So that's obviously been the techniques and that's the reason why. And I'll go back right before we end just to give one more visual of Ooh. those bait, of the bait fish in the, in the fish's throat. And then obviously the side by side comparison with a crankbait Brandon Pollock was throwing. Those alewife did not look happy being no. in the back of that small mouth. No. They were, it looked like they were right yelling, there, help me. me. They were help a, me. a living, yes. small, a so, living sardine can so. right there. End of a bad, bad morning out in the inland sea for those alewife. Going to get back out of water right now. Justin Atkins made some nice upgrades in the last 90 minutes. Actually, interesting about Canterbury. I was watching his... GPS track on day one. Canterbury was in the winning area uh, throughout the first day of competition. I mean, he was in the right zone in between those two islands. Might help. Might be more like a three and a half.
You were right, Z. There are a bunch of anglers who were in the winning area that could not see yes. them as well, could not catch them with that technology. No not even just catch them Ronnie. as good as 18, 20 pounds, like not catch a limit in the group of them because they can't exactly. see in the waves 50, 60, 80 feet out. Jay Shakira in sixth place, started the day in fifth place, so not much movement for him during the course of this day. We still got it. Fujita on top with 86 pounds and three ounces. Cody Huff trying to chip away at it. Justin Atkins as well, his two closest pursuers. Kind of running out of time here. Championship Monday, but more to come. Well, ooh, ooh, ooh. last one of the event, my friend. Rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series, Kyoya Fujita. We were warned well before the season began that he was the real deal coming out of the Bassmaster Opens. Well, he has definitely lived up to that. Kyoya Fujita with a big one during our midday break. We got to see lots of those throughout the tournament with him, but well needed today. That bass right there may have sealed the deal for the rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Koya Fujita, the mystery man, you are the power pole replay of the event, my friend. Wow. So strong. What a performance we are witnessing here today. Four top for sevens. Four days. Yeah. Four top sevens for him as long as he makes it back today. Wow. A victory included in those if he makes it back today. You know, Tommy, I told you when him and I had a little butting of the heads, you know, talking about at St. Clair, I invited Koya uh, out to go to Bumpers, one of the bars on the south side of Anchor Bay and talk it through, hang out for a while. Totally shot me down. No. Totally shot me down. No. Yeah, I did. <laughs> maybe, maybe he didn't like that place. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Three, two. Oh, three, three, ten. Yeah. Yes. Three ten. Shot forward a little upgrade there again for Fujita. Tell me who's your pick to win next week at the St. Lawrence River event, wow. friendo. Yeah. Well, oh, Jay Shakur, it's the obvious, obvious pick. I mean, you know. I th Is he? Is he the obvious well, pick? Well, I don't know. Corey <laughs> and Lightning Strike. Corey twice. Johnston going to be motivated. Corey's going to yes, be motivated. Yes, I would agree. Plenty I'd say motivated. Limited practice. Yeah, leans the Johnstons. the Johnstons and Coop Gallant. Yeah, that's good thing too. I think Coop's going to be a be a handful in that tournament. I might as well. You could say Fujita. Who knows? It's not the right one. Dang it. I am very interested to see how Cobb and Welcher fish this event. I could see if it gets rough. Welcher saying, heck with it, I'm going to the lake. And it, it, could, it could go after, either way there. But I feel like Cobb would err on the side of staying in the river and, and getting the job done to a certain extent there. And I wonder 
which strategy could factor. I may be wrong in that, but I just feel like their styles lend to both those things. That lake will be happening next week. Ooh, we're revisiting our Skeeter Boats BFAs, our big fish alerts. Chase secured on day one with a 5-4. Mark Manen is a largemouth. 5-4 on day two. I don't think we're going to pass that today with a Jacob Fouts' 4-12 being the biggest so far. So now we do best of big fish alerts. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> good, good. Ooh. Why not? They're too soon forgotten anyway. It's good to, good to bring them up. Nobody really caught two of those a day. There's only a couple five pounders in the event. You know, those two, Lawford had one, Cody Huff had one on day two, Blaylock and Redwine. Schmidt's 5-1 on day three. Not a lot of five pounders. No. Tommy, you will find this, possibly find this interesting. I, You know I live in a, a very large Amish community in right. Southern Michigan. Right. And this was uh, the day that we had called off. Friday, I, I was out front and, and I was looking at the lake and, uh, and I see this often, um, that there was some Amish fellas that were out bass fishing and both of them were staring. They were on the front of the boat, shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> staring at what? forward facing sonar. And I thought to myself, you have a horse and carriage. <laughs> you will not drive a vehicle, but yet you will use forward facing sonar. <laughs> they could hand crank the battery I, to I, power it up. It's, it was very interesting to me, but that, I, that's, I have seen that a lot on the lake I live on. That's not what I call being plain. Is it being plain a no. virtue in the Amish community? That's yeah. not being plain. Yeah. All right. Yes. Very <laughs> I interesting. Want, I don't want to offend anybody's religion here. <laughs> it's not what you do during the commercial break. No, wait a minute, Tommy. I mean, come on. Plain is how you can describe Fajita's start. They had a uh, ore boat. That was one of their first boats that they, they got when he was a little guy, seven or eight years old. Took Robot, out on yeah. the lakes and fished off the banks like everybody fished from the banks tournaments over there or even some of them are you know, standing on sure. on the bank and fishing. Call motor battery, you want to sleep? You're telling me. This is the third time I've had this happen this year in place. Shouldn't happen, man. No, it shouldn't. 24 year old Alex Redwine from Blue Ash, Ohio. First time in the top 10 with us. Just a bunch of fish we don't need. I'll double check him, I guess. Some fours. Where are the fours?
Red Wines looking at Dublin, his biggest BASS paycheck this week. That place to give him 20 grand. He's got some cuts, but 10 grand is the biggest he's ever secured. AOI points. He's jumped up from 90th two events ago to inside our requalification 70th place. He's 68. 68th, yeah. As you were looking at the pictures of those alewives a little bit ago, and we're talking about their presence out there, especially where deeper, current-laden areas. And you know, I wonder if it has anything to do. You know, you talk to people of ocean fish, and they're always looking for upwellings. They're always looking for big, big places where water comes from deep. Brings that plankton up, which atta attracts the bait really? fish. Is is it the same sort of situation there? That why that, that why the alewife are there? I don't. I don't know, I, but what I, the one thing that I do know about this tournament from what we've learned is it seems like your leaders, uh, the guys that had that better quality in this tournament and, and frankly just better, bigger schools, there is a there must be a connection with those big pods of alewife running near that main ledge basin in the Inland Sea. Because look, there's a lot of areas like where Jacob Fouts was or or City Reef on the west side of the Inland Sea that you saw good stringers caught. But as far as multiple good stringers, it seems like those big, big pods of alewife that we saw on Cody Huff's screen, you see where Koya Fujita is, that area, uh, you know, it's right next to that main deep basin that falls you know, into a hundred and something feet of water. Mm. There, there, there has to be a connection there. Yeah. When we went to a map, the guys were, you know, not like St. Clair, they were kind of nearly willy in the area. They were kind of lined up going down. So I figured it was a contour line or a grass line or. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's, uh, you know, that if you looked at how our map laid out, it was a perfect from south to north, from Damius Island all the way north in the Inland Sea. That's where those leaders were lined up on that main 30 to 60 foot break off into the abyss. Hmm. Uh, this is 91 years ago, Tommy, but that area that Koya is in, uh, I, I fished a lot of tournaments there and I taped a lot of shows there. There was one day I was out there alone and, and the sun was setting and out near that, that drop off that goes into the abyss, a school is small. And it was this time of year, actually, I remember and it was probably 20 years, more than 20 years ago. There was a school, a small mouth, you know, like we've heard guys say in this tournament and we've seen it on Cody Huff's screen, you know, there's 30, 40, 50 bass. There was a school of smallmouth that came up and crashed the surface for two minutes. And I don't know how they were not giants. There weren't five pounders, but I don't know how many hundreds of bass in a two acre stretch blasted the surf, which t t that was the story back then. But we didn't know what was going on under the surface. We do now. And it really, what we've seen in this tournament, when they get done spawning on this lake, they act like a, they act like a striped bass that you see chasing bluebacks all summer long swimming offshore and rarely, rarely relating to the bottom.
First of several reminders I'm going to send your way. We got the final way into this tournament. Coming up here at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on Bassmaster.com. It won't take long. You got to get some guys on the road, get them over there to Clayton, New York. Start preparing for that one, but uh, it'll be a big, uh, a big celebration. The winner of the eighth stop of the year on the Bassmaster Elite Series in that Yeti hot seat. Go here, Fujita. Yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Much more than a half hour figuring in travel time here for our 10 anglers oh, yeah. who are on average out there. Trying to get it done in the final minutes of fishing here on Championship Monday. The Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite here. One more stop after this and the season is done. It's going to be a big one though. St. Lawrence River, Lake Ontario playing as well. Tommy, I asked you who you thought was a, f a f obvious favorites for next week's tour. Who, who do you give the advantage to for winning Angler of the Year next week? Uh, man, Kyle Welcher has got, got, the, got the momentum going. Right. Wow. Uh, you know, that's going, to be, I, that's going to be a good showdown there, I think. I think it's yes. going to be terrific. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll right. say Welcher. I'll go Welcher. Okay. I think I th uh, what Ronnie said, I think Mother Nature is going to have her say in for in some way, shape or form, especially the first two days of that. One of those anglers is going to have to make the cut, at least the top 50 cut. Um, and there's going to be a lot of decision making, especially that first and uh, going into the second day of that event when wins are going to, you know, get up there. Two yeah. great stories, uh, those guys. I mean, you know, Welcher making every cut and Cobb, for sure. you know, with a 91st on his dance card and still pushing there to the top. I, I would lean, if you made me pick one, it would be Cobb. But if either of those guys are lingering around 48 to 58 right. in yes. the standings, Cook, Shakir, Walters, and Savuentes. Yes. One of those guys is going to be, Cook is 30 points back. The other three are going to be 36 to 42 back. So there's going to be a three-person cluster with just a few single points. Someone out of those four is going to make our top 15, and they could win yep. it if these guys don't make the top 50. Sh like, Shakir uh, and Savuentes, both among them. They could yeah, totally I mean, do that, wow. 100%. And yeah. I wouldn't put it past Walters. No, Walters no, has done not, some crazy he, stuff. Sure, and he's, he's close enough. Get not, doesn't have much to lose. And Shakir's 36 back. Hook is 30 back. And Welcher, last year he was 24th up at St. Lawrence, but he had a couple bad finishes previous years. Cobb's best was 11th in 2021. Cook has had some good finishes the last two years or in the 20s. Yeah. And, and really, guys like Cook, Walters, Shakur, and you could throw some 20s, they've got nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose in that tournament. I mean, they could really gamble and, and make a run. Yeah, and Sefuentes, uh, I believe, got like second place or. He almost won there, he told like me. He said he, like last he had a bad year, I think, or something like that. Like literally got second, and like this time of the year, I'm pretty sure. He's confident these last three events was his best shot to win this season. Seminole was a great surprise. No, I was, um, unless the standings are wrong, he got a top 15 the same week we'll be there, basically. One other thing that's interesting about our top 10 this week, looking at the four box here, after day one, we had our established top 10. One day of competition, we had our top 10. We had six guys, you know, we would have had six guys on camera, but we had 10 of them on camera with the postponement. Seven of those 10 after day one, Stayed in our top ten all week. Wow. We had three guys That's, over the next three you days see jump that in. Very much. Felix, no. Robertson, and Fouts. Everyone else has been in the top ten since day one. Hmm. 
which does prove one of the things we said earlier today and every tournament we've covered. It's hard, hard once you get out ahead here, it is hard to catch up on this body of water. Yeah, you're not you're not going to hit a grand slam with one fish. That's, no. that's for one thing. Yeah. Years past, I think Fighter had our biggest fish, a large amount, six six. We haven't seen anything close. But our overall weight, we're going to have four or five guys probably break the the previous winning weights here. That was the largest, which is interesting. Already three, right? Yeah. And uh, only two who haven't topped 80 pounds. Uh, as we bring it into the Dakota Lithium screen of knowledge here, I wanted to show you some Lake Master mapping. We talked about a couple areas over the last few days. We've kind of concreted in between the islands there and shown you the different depth changes there. But we're going to go to two different areas, not far from there, but just branching out a little bit where we've seen our field kind of spread just a little bit. To the east, towards St. Albans, not in St. Albans, but not far from it, you can see the gradual or the formation of this flat from when you go from land on the east side and it's got really tight contours until you get to about 20 feet of water and then it really gets flat all the way out until it reaches the next nearest island and that whole flat has been a place uh, that we've seen Jacob Fouts linger around. We've seen some other anglers, especially getting around where that 28 to 35 foot drop would be, but where that flat has a, a defined line and starts to cut into that flat, that, that deeper portion does. That's one area that we've seen a top 10 rise up of other than the seven who have been in our top 10 all week. We saw Jacob Fouts rise into the top 10 from this general region. And then just north on the north end of the islands that have factored, uh, we talked about Brian uh, Bryant Smith and how he went a little shallower today. We still saw big pods of bait uh, in that 15 foot or less range, but we saw a lot smaller fish, not nearly the size of the, the places that are 25 to 45 feet of water that we've seen everyone else traverse. And that kind of shows you it's the north end of that where, where it drops off to the 30, 40 feet of water before it gets down to the where the islands combine together. Um, but up above that is where there's a lot of actual contour changes. This is relatively the light blue is 20 to 25 feet, but all these spots of yellow are high spots. And then there's a couple gray spots of low spots in there. So not only do you have large flats, but you also have big divots and canyons, high humps as well that pop in throughout this flat. So definitely a place not only that has worked uh, a little bit for guys this week in mid August, but certainly would work in September, maybe even work in the June time period as well, July time period. So couple of different places on Champlain other than the main trench uh, gut, you know, between the two islands that we've been talking about. That is really good stuff with uh, looking at that Lake Master and what, what has been really the story in this is, you know, from what you were just showing there is Gull Island Shoal and the east side of Damius Island is not a very crazy big surprise where they have been caught this week compared to how they have been caught, I think has been the true story throughout this tournament. But but showing the mapping the last three days really paints a good picture for anybody that's never been into the Inland Sea of Lake Champlain Bassmaster. That shot we just saw there on the run, Kyoto Fujita uh, running back, quite possibly. He wants that clock to run fast right now. That's what he wants. Every tick of the clock puts him closer to the championship here for sure. Back out to Alex Redwine. No, it's not. No help us. Whoa, jumpy. Maybe it'll help us. I thought it was the one. I thought it was one of them giants. I don't know. If I, don't I don't think he's going to help us in this way. I don't know. I thought it was a lot bigger. I don't know. The scales. Well, I, I really did think it was a lot bigger.
Time running out here on the final day. Boy, it looks like that wind has laid down a good bit. That's going to be a benefit to all those yeah. guys on their trip back to Ooh. Plattsburgh City Dock. Get ready for the weigh-in there. I remind you now, it comes, comes at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Promptly then, we'll weigh them in and get our champion crowned here. Fujita on top as it stands now. I'll take a quick break and come back. Last off, there's all the media, the fans, family, you're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. This is a giant bat. All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Gussie gets it done! And oh, Canada, you have a Bassmaster Classic Champion! Yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Some of our anglers already on, on the run, heading back to Plattsburgh City Dock there. Get ready for weigh-in time coming up at 3 Eastern right here on Bassmaster.com. Ten anglers out there all day long. Julia Fujita started the day with the lead. He is still in the lead as it starts right now. Oh, what a performance, huh? <laughs> yeah, and we got, kind of got spoiled throughout this tournament looking at all the big stringers that we got to see. It was a little bit tougher today, definitely, with that north wind that we thought maybe pushing against that current would slow it down a little bit. But when your bad day is a, unofficially, Tommy, 18 pounds and nine ounces, you have knocked their lights out. And a big hats off to all of our anglers and cameramen and women that were out there this week. An unbelievable tournament, unbelievable tournament to learn about the behavior of summertime smallmouth on Lake Champlain, your Marathon Peak Performance rookie on the Elite Series, Koya Fujita. Let's get out to Jay Shakurit. Been right in the fifth, sixth position all day long. I think we might have a big one. Currently six, but he's, yeah, you yep. heard that. We got to get back out of school. Fast, Jay Shakurit wants to get back on the school, running out of time in general at this point of the day. Looked like a good one, though. This little guy again. I just haven't gotten any true giants. None of those Lake Champlain tubbies. I'm just lipping them so I don't break it off and lose my last jig head. Come on, buddy. 
Like that's how we want them to be hooked, you know? We want them to be hooked straight through there. We don't want them nipping at the tail. We want them hooked straight through the roof. Feels like a big one. Oh yeah, baby. Let's go. She came over here sooner. Gotta be close. It's like they really just started a bite. Now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we gotta go with four minutes left Amazing. to fish. Amazing what happens when that sun pops out for 37 seconds today. Ooh, man. Two good ones right there. Brian Smith hooked up now. Fifth place. He lost a good one today. We. I don't even think that's gonna help. Come here. Come here. Easy. Easy. Supposed to be a last minute four pounder. I'm sorry. It's Cody Huff that lost. And yeah, oh, Felix did as well. Yeah. Felix smacked his rod. Yeah. There's Austin Felix. Mm-hmm. You get something done, you want to get every ounce you can get before you head on back to Plattsburgh, New York. Get ready for weigh-in time. Still Kyoya Fujita on top. Cody Huff. Well, Cody Huff, we understand, is uh, on his way back as well. Justin Atkins, Jay Shakurit, Bryant Smith, our top five as it stands right now. We got a tiny bit of fishing left to go and maybe some good highlights to show you as well when we come back. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. 
Progressive Insurance. And by Rapala. Welcome back. Final minutes of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. Been here for four days of fishing. It feels like a lot longer than that with the postponement. Like we've been here the better part of a week because we have been here the better part of a week. But boy, what we have seen during the course of this week, let's take a look back with our hummingbird, Unlock the Lake. Exactly right, Tom. I'm going to take a look at really a lot of your leaders throughout this tournament, this Hummingbird Unlock the Lake. The true story in this event, you had better be fishing in the Inland Sea. Our takeoff was there in Plattsburgh, New York. You go through the gut and you come into the Inland Sea, and it was really being near that main drop off around the islands out there. From there, working up north towards Gull Island Shoals, so many of your top anglers in this tournament. Really, the entire event was concentrating on smallmouth that were hurting alewife, a small little bait fish on Lake Champlain. And one angler that was really flawless throughout the week, Alex Redwine, and pretty much all of your anglers trying to mimic that little bait fish. Alex Redwine, for the most part of this event, throwing a small Berkeley gulp minnow on a jig head. It saw a couple fish catches on a spy bait throughout the week. But the one thing that we got to see with Alex Redwine, very, very solid with his electronics. Didn't catch big numbers, but the quality definitely was there for Alex Redwine. Alex Redwine came out punching 22 pounds and 14 ounces on day number one. That was his big day. Backed it up though with 21-14 on day two. Super solid performance. He was stoked to get to the northern swing, Tommy. A top 30 at St. Clair, a top 10 this week at Lake Champlain. Going into the St. Lawrence River, he needs this good momentum to end the year, and he has gotten it so far. First year man, the rookie Bryant Smith came here with a lot of fanfare and backing it up for sure this week, showing his versatility, showing his affinity with this kind of fishing. Tommy, you're going to see a common theme right here. Bryant Smith right here throwing a jig head minnow, striking baby Z2 yep. for suspended bass in the inland sea and really concentrating from Call it 25 all the way out to 50 feet of water. Not a lot of experience on Lake Champlain. Kind of dialed this bite in and practice. And one of the biggest keys that talking to a lot of your leaders in this tournament, literally when they would mark one bass or a school of 10 bass, follow them, hunt for them until you finally got a bite. Now one angler that was doing something a little bit different, even though he was in the Inland Sea, Justin Atkins, fishing a little bit shallower, shallower grass lines that had deep water butted up against cabbage lines on the west side of Damius Island. A quarter ounce underspin with a Berkeley flatworm would kind of mix with colors with that underspin. Darker skies, a darker flatworm, and the sky's got bright like this. A little bit more natural hue to it, but one of the only anglers using an underspin. Great great performance for Justin Atkins yet again on a small mouth body of water. Nobody went through more fish this week with the exception of maybe one angler than Justin Atkins certainly had the odds in his favor numbers wise and Cody Huff second year man out here and, and very well versed in this type of fishing. Yeah there is no like doubt that. about it Cody Huff absolute hammer with his electronics trip. cutting his teeth on table rock and the one difference here Cody Huff also using a jig head minnow, a Thought VMC a big, jig head with a bigger five inch Z2 trailer on there. Said he felt that that bigger five inch shad style bait definitely getting bigger bites. Cody Huff all week long, like Koya Fujita, out fishing a lot of his competition around him. And he said he felt that bigger bait key for the quality bites. Cody Huff, your day one leader. Very, very impressive. Kind of alerted everyone to what was possible here this week with a 23 pound, three ounce limit. And there he is, the man himself, Koya Fujita. We didn't know much about him before this year, but boy, we know a lot about his abilities after watching Do him we? for four straight days. <laughs> I, we know he's really good with he's electronics really good. and finesse baits, <laughs> and that's about what we know about well, Koya Fujita. And I bet. He likes that, Tommy Sanders. Mm -hmm. Getting it done on the east side of Damius Island. So much current comes through the islands in the Inland Sea and really doing a lot of damage early. Every single day of this tournament, most of his damage was done 
by about 11 o'clock, a jig head minnow fishing from college, 25 all the way out to about 40 to 50 feet of water. And one of the biggest keys, like Cody Huff, fishing, out fishing other anglers, other competitors around him the entire tournament. One thing that was fantastic watching him, Tommy, was that some days he had a really, really strong morning. Some days he relied on the last hour of the day to catch his biggest fish. Kyoyo Fujita, fantastic week for him. Very great week, very different week from visits to Lake Champlain past. It has been something else this week at Lake Champlain. That's your hummingbird unlock the lake. Patrick Walters, as all of these guys are kind of either on their way or getting ready to leave, get back to weigh in time. Make two or three casts that right here, and then we'll probably roll out. You still got Vegeta in there, Bryant. Mama, what is that? <laughs> hey, we had to we had to change it up today. Tried to go for a big bag of fish. Had to change the color scheme up, and we had fun. We got a bunch of fish. I mean, we definitely did not uh, lacking in the fish catching department. But hey, just didn't get the big bites today. That's how it goes. We fished a bunch of new water, found some different fish. Just didn't find that school of five pounders. But hey, that's fishing. I've had a great week. We'll take a top ten any day of the week. And uh, shorts might stay. Y'all watch out. Might find me on a beach, local somewhere, so you never know. I might be catching fish, might be sipping on a cold snack on a sandy beach. And <laughs> Belk. <laughs> Belk. <laughs> Can confirm that is true. Already got mine on layaway, Tommy. Four easy payments. Boy, there has been some bass caught right there, Tommy, throughout the years. Yep. Lake Champlain, right outside of the gut. I recognize that spot. I kind of missed seeing it this week, Z. <laughs> Say it again? I said it was kind of nice. I missed it this week. We always had this as a landmark. We'd see an angler fishing. Yes, and, you know, and yes, we missed it yes. <laughs> Hey, we haven't been close tens. enough to land to see anything identifiable <laughs> this whole week. No. That's just the way it is. That's the way it has gone down this week for sure. One more look at our unofficial leaderboard. Nothing's official till we get done with the weigh-in, which is coming up, I remind you again. At 3 p.m. Eastern time, Fujita with 86.5. Huff and Atkins, his closest pursuers, Shakurik, Bryant Smith. Red wine and all the rest, all the down there. Congrats to all these 10 for having fished so hard. Absolutely. And adapting to a new world order out there today on Lake Champlain, today and all four days. Weigh-in starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time, as we say, right here on Bassmaster.com. On that Yeti hot seat. Oh, burning. Dripping, hot. dripping heat. <laughs> no question about it. Thank you all for being with us this week. It's been so much fun at a very different type of event on Lake Champlain. See you at the weigh-in.